The Hangout on Air is live. It's 9.58 a.m. Good morning. Where are we? Let's wait for some people to start coming in. Let me know when you're in. Uh, I'll adjust accordingly, whatever I need to do. Uh, yeah, that's a good question, huh? I think we're good to go. Capture cameraman, huh? Draw control room, Google effects. I think I got everything I need. Showcase. Draw a control room, Google effects. I think I got everything I need. Showcase. I have two lines. All right, can you guys let me know when you can hear me or see me, that kind of thing, because um, right now I look like I'm flying solo. Okay, all right, Robert. I don't see in the, you, you must just be watching the video feed. I don't see anybody in here yet. Uh, six viewers. Let's see if we can get it going here. We'll give it some time. It's new. Ask your audience to submit questions and they will appear below. Oh, nice. Okay, so if you don't want to, if you don't want to interact with me here, you can submit the questions, and I'll, I'll do, I'll go from there. However, the idea of this um, broadcast is that we want to have you live in the studio here, and then I can show you some things that I'm doing this morning. Well, or what we're going to talk about this morning. Unfortunately, you can't see my board over there too well. Um, I'm used to a very wide angle lens, but I don't have that on my MacBook. So we're going to go with a standard lens and I'm going to show you, let's see how these kinds of things work here. Yeah, that'll work. That'll be good. We can ooh, break my negatives here. We can, we can work with it, but let's get somebody in the chat so, or in the live feed so we can, um, interact a little bit. There's 10 viewers now, uh, just waiting for some more. It's only 10 02. So we're not going to. We're not going to get too concerned with that. I've got a piece of collodion chloride drying in the dark room right behind me. I'm during this broadcast. I'm going to do a, a print or attempt to do a print um, on that collodion chloride paper. So um, as we go along, the idea of this is twofold, really. One, my time is so um, I'm, I'm so busy now with everything going on that I have going on. And I really want to do these podcasts or these these broadcasts, but by the time I shoot something and edit it and get it uploaded, it's it's like a day, sometimes a day and a half, depending on how how much editing I do or how much work I have to do. Um, so this this idea, 
hey, there's John. Good morning, John. I, I won't type back. I'll just uh, I'll just acknowledge you. Um, some of you have been in my workshops, and we'll talk a little bit about that, and we'll we'll, we'll bat that around. What is it like to do a slow um, part by part remote workshop? That's what this is. And then some of you have been in my live workshops in my studio here in Denver, and now. I'm out in the metro, I'm in the Aurora area now, the metro Denver area, and um, I've got this facility, my home, my, I love it here, nice big open space, and uh, I got my dark room, I'm all set up. So those of you that have been here, you know what I'm working in and with, um, we'll chime in on that, and you can, uh, you can ask questions there, and um, if you don't know how to work it, John knows how to work it, it's pretty straightforward, I think, you, you should have an icon up there with a Q&A. Click on it, and the questions will appear up there. So we got 14 viewers at 10:04. So we're we're rolling along here, guys. Let's get somebody in in the on the live feed here. Uh, is it me? Are we having problems? What's the deal? You can't join the live feed. Let me know. I know you can hear me, and you should be able to see me as well, because that's kind of important to see what I'm doing here. So. Somebody jump in on the video or, or text me or, or uh, message me and let me know what's going on so I have an idea of what we're doing here. I figured there'd be some more people in here by now. We'll wait until about 10 after, see, see how, how we're going. Um, so in the interim, 16 viewers, in the interim, you let me know, um, present to everyone, let's see. You are presenting to everyone. Okay, yeah, that's what I want. Mute profile, stop, no, okay. I'm just figuring this out too because I just turned it on to do the live show. So I don't know, you know, I don't know how it exactly works, but we're going to find out. 19 viewers, climbing, 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 that's good. I think I can have 10 people live in the video stream at a time. And, uh, yeah, this is Robert. I can see and hear you. Perfect, Robert. Awesome. So I can have 10 people in the live video interacting, and I think we can have unlimited watching the show. And this will also post to uh, YouTube after the show. So it's really good. Um, it's got really good potential in my mind. And if we can pull this off, boy, this eliminates a lot of time and headache and hassle for me. And more importantly, it's interactive. You can... Uh, you can... Um, Yes, it is wonderful, Robert. Technology is awesome. So people think I hate digital photography. People think I don't like, you know, whatever. Uh, they don't know me. Once you come, once you meet me, and I hope, I hope this this little interaction will um, help you to get to know me and um, know that I'm not <laughs> some of the things I read about myself online. I'm not anti-digital. I don't hate digital photography. I don't you know, I don't hate technology by any stretch of the imagination. If you came to my home, you'd, you'd, yeah, you'd know that I do not uh, dislike technology. I love it, and that's why I'm doing it here. Hey, Kevin, uh, I'm watching you grading the comfort of my bedroom, so not wanting to be in the live video. That's fine. That's fine. And there's going to be a lot of people like that, and that's cool. I just want people coming into the live feed that um, have burning questions, that have, um, uh, give me the toughest questions you can think of. Get, lay it on me, man. Hit me hard. I want the toughest stuff out there. And or you just want to chat. You want to talk about something. You want to clear up some ideas or concepts or um, precepts. They're, they're, throw them on me. Let's, let's have that conversation because that's what this is about. This is about having people interact, exchange ideas, and um, make this process and this ritual, the ceremony that we do making photographs um, more enjoyable and better. That's the idea, right? Better in your own way. All clear and audio here. Cheers for doing this, Quinn. You're absolutely. Hey, uh, Luciano from Italy. All right. Uh, seeing you, hearing you well. Testing, testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Right on. All right. Ismail, Senior Ismail, wonderful. You're in. Awesome. Good, good, good. Yeah. Let's uh, let's start the conversation. Well, we'll give it a couple more minutes. I said 10 after. Greetings from Berlin. All right. A Paz. 
Hey, Paz. Hello, V Gates. All is good, yeah? It's good here. We're in live from Aurora, Colorado. It's uh, not exactly warm today. We've had the big polar vortex come down and catch us. We're right, Denver's right on the edge of that. It kind of, kind of a bummer. Uh, we hit some extreme temperatures the other day. Very, very cold. Um, we had the sun out yesterday. We'll get the sun back out tomorrow. You know, here in the Denver metro area, we get 310 days of sun a year. You kind of know why I'm here. It's the sun. That's I love it. Printing out, making photographs. Uh, uh, Philip can't figure out how to talk on Google. Hmm. Yeah, good question. Let's see if. Uh, let me excuse me for just a second. I knew I'd have to do. Uh, wow. I. Um, uh, somebody else, man. I got like I said. I got too many. Too many people pinging me a lot of times. Can't figure out how to talk on Google. Um, do you have a Google, do you have a G, uh, Gmail account? Yeah, you might, I should have said something. You may have to, you may have to get a Google account to get into these things. So having said that, um, we're about ready to begin, I think. So no one wants to come in live on the video. Come on, some of you Europeans, it's it's in the evening. It's 18, 19, 20 hundred hours there. I mean, it's in the evening. Nobody's in bed over there, I hope. Come on, jump in the video. Let's let's have some inter interaction. I want to start this conversation and get this thing going. I only I only signed up for two hours on these. So I hopefully hopefully we won't go much longer. But if we need more time than that, I'll I'll sign up for uh I think you can go up to eight hours. I won't do eight hours, but I might do three hours if it's if it's worth it if we get going. Let me let me lay out a couple of things here. First, this like I said, this is mainly for time. For me, it's um, it's important that I uh, manage my time a little better than I have been. Uh, I still want to do these videos, and this, like I said a minute ago, this will cut down all that editing and shooting. And oh, my battery died here. I didn't have audio there. Um, Quinn, trying to figure this out, just joined, can see and hear you, fine. All right, Ufus, welcome, man. Good to have you aboard, brother man. It's good to, good to have you there, although I can't see you, you can see me, and that's, I don't know if that's what counts, but I'm glad you can see me and hear me. Um, so cutting down time, allowing me to do these, and moreover, interacting with you know one another, trying to build a little bit of a community, and I'd like to do this every week if I can. Um, if you have, um, uh, if you if you want to, if you have a specific thing you want to address in here, this is kind of a warm up one, right? We'll we'll see how this works. Get everybody in on the technology. Get every everybody going. If this works well in the future live broadcast, think about coming in on the live video, asking questions. Um, and interacting with me virtually. And, and like I said, I can have 10 people in here at a time, I believe, and we can switch those out. And of course, we can have unlimited viewers. Um, this is fluctuating between 19 and 23 viewers now. So, so we're getting there, and it's 10, 12. Everybody's late, right? Everybody's late. I mean, that's the, that's the name of the game. And I'm cool with this. This is just a, this is just a kickback, kind of laid-back thing we're going to do. And uh, I hope I hope I don't sit here and talk to myself all morning. I hope you get in and, and start uh, pinging me with some things. Um, I've got a piece of clothing chloride in there drying right now. I'm going to um, make a print here in just a bit. I'm going to print it out under LED, and uh, we'll watch that process happen. Um, let's see if we can. I don't know which way this feed is going. So when do you leave for China? I leave for China in six days. Six days I will be on a 26-hour journey to Shanghai, China. And let me tell you about that just for a minute. This is really exciting stuff for me um, and for the wet plate colluding process, really, in general. Um, I have, in the last year, decided to um, stop playing around with uh, daguerreotypes and calotypes and some of these other things I've been doing. And um, I got a bunch of daguerreotype gear over there, so stay tuned. That's going to go up. I've got everything, and it's top end stuff. So uh, that's going to go up on the market soon. 
And um, I decided just to concentrate on wet collodion, the wet collodion process. And there's good reason for that. Um, as the world opens up to it, now China, um, I was fortunate to go to, to Europe in 2006 and travel around and reintroduce the process there, teach a bunch of people, some of them in the, in the chat right now with us or on this live broadcast with us. And, um, and then come back to America and I taught here before I left and now I'm teaching again here. But, but as the world opens up, um, there's probably not thinking into the future, there's probably not a more significant um, continent or country, if you will, uh, than China when it comes to this kind of stuff, simply for the fact that China's economically and kind of every financially and everything else is kind of where America was in the 1950s, say. Um, the economy is exploding. Yes, they have a bunch of other problems. But as that begins to build and the middle class begins to grow there, um, you'll see a lot. You'll see a lot of movement. Um, uh, Philip Chin is trying to get in. Hold on, just a second. Let me see if I can help him here. Um, so you go to that link. Um, I don't know what else to do. Uh, Google Plus. <clears throat> so as as China builds their middle class and that that. Um, disposable income, extra money coming in. They're, they're having that happen now. Uh, they're looking ways for places to invest their money or put their money, those kinds of things, as the middle class grows and, and those finances become available. So it's, a, it's, it's going to be, I think it's going to be huge in China. I think it's going to exceed what we've seen in America and Europe, to be honest with you. And I'm really fortunate to be part of that. And that is going to, my China trip's basically going to establish in a loose, unofficial, somewhat way. I was invited there by the China Academy of Art. Um, it's going to establish in a, in a loose, unofficial way the, the Collodian Collective there. And we're going to kind of build that as a base for Chinese artists and photographers to come into Wet Plate, learn it, work in it. And what's really exciting for me is there. Yes, they're interested in the technical, but they're more interested in the conceptual and the creative aspect of it. So uh, there are a lot of Chinese working in Collodian now. I've been working with them for several years now. I was in the Shanghai Biennial last year. Um, I have that book, that catalog over there. Um, a few of my plates are there, and they, they're, they, they're going to have them in this show as well, too. But um, really, we haven't skimmed the surface over there, scratched the surface over there. So it's going to be interesting to see of where they take it, how far they go. And I'm, I'm, uh, I have a relationship with Chamonix cameras, the cameras that I use. Um, Haas, the, the owner, came out to uh, a workshop here in Denver last January and visited me. Very kind, a wonderful guy, wonderful crew. Uh, Chamonix has 12 people working, um, hand-making these cameras and, um, in China there. And they're just, they're fantastic. They're light. Uh, all the movements. My 8x10 camera, I think, weighs 2.2 kilos, less than 5 pounds, right? 5 pounds. Um, I can carry it on an airplane, pack it up in my Pelican case, and actually carry three of my favorite lenses, two plate holders, in uh, <clears throat> um, my ground glass mask, my my um, my um, um, loop, sorry, my loop, um, my little pins and everything I need for my camera, three lenses, my 810 camera in a Pelican case that fits in the overhead bin in an airplane. Very nice stuff. I've never been able to do that ever, especially an 810 camera. So good stuff there. So there, China is well on its way. It's going to be a big deal. Um, I don't know yet, but I think I'll maybe try to go back once a year or once every other year, depending on what we do there. And, and also um, they're going to translate my books. Yes. This is got to got to uh, translate these guys into uh, Mandarin Chinese. So that's going to be awesome. We're going to be loving that. Um, that's going to help me out a lot and afford the opportunity like this, which I really love. If it were up to me, money were no object. I'd I'd open the floodgates up on all this stuff and just let let everybody run with it because it's it's that exciting to me and it's that rewarding for me. So. 
So here we are, uh, 18 minutes into the broadcast. We have 20, 19 viewers, um, and I don't, uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, amazing how one can find the question box when the page is expanded, uh, corning through loud, oh, coming through loud and clear in Eastern Canada. Thanks, Dale. Uh, trying to work this stuff out. We'll join if I can. Yeah, let's, uh, am I doing something wrong here? Do I need to allow you guys in to, to get the video going or, um, uh, as guest joins, hide their audio and video from my broadcast? No. So I'm just trying, I'm trying to figure this out too, guys. So bear with me. Um, here it is. Let's see. Turn camera off. Adjust bandwidth. Can somebody come in just for a second at least so I can see that this stuff is working or are we just not going to play the video game today, I guess, maybe. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Show item. Yeah, I'm not really sure on this. So we'll play along. We'll see, we'll see if uh, hide from broadcast, stop presenting, profile, mute. No, that's me there, and that's – okay. Anyway. Let me go see if my paper's dry. I'm going to grab a contact printer, and I'm not sure which negative or negatives I'm going to print out. I might, I might print these little half plates out, um, one super dense and one not so dense. might print these out and see what they do. So hold on for just a second. If you come in to the chat, this is why I want somebody here to keep the conversation going if I have to walk away and go into the dark room. I'm going to figure out how – I was looking at this, by the way – I'm going to figure out how to get my GoPro to feed into these broadcasts so I can remote like on Wi-Fi so I can take you around, uh, take you into the dark room, take you around the, the studio. And um, we'll tight for a second. I will be back in just a second. All right, are we still there? I hope we are. I decided just to print out um, one. Um, I, I, I float a piece of burrito paper with the um, chlorine chloride that we oh, – um, Bruce won't be in uh, here, but uh, Nico won't. I don't think neither one – well, we just did a class last week, and um, Nico's still here in Denver, actually, and Bruce is in uh, Louisiana. So I don't think either one of them will be in the workshop, but – or in this um, broadcast, but we just made the clothing chloride uh, last week on this. I'm going to go plop this over in, under the LED. Uh, we'll time it out here. I'll, I'll see. We'll 
check on it in a couple of minutes and see how it's printing out. So this is a this is a half plate. I don't even know if this is half plate. I think it's half plate. Maybe not. Maybe it's four by five. But anyway, this is a very old negative, and I want to show you some of the the extremes in uh, printing out. But I'll, I also want to show you how chlorine chloride handles it. So I'm going to put it under the lights right here. And I'll put my timer on and we'll see what kind of printing out time we get on that under LED with uh, quite a thin negative actually uh, in some parts. It's going to be interesting to see. Let's put the timer on here and we'll start. Okay, we'll check it in, I don't know, we'll check it in about four or five minutes. So, um, Q and A. Yeah, anyone know how to turn on cameras and mic at home to participate? Yufus is asking. Hi, Quinn. Everything is fine. The Lancaster PA video working great. Oh, hi, Barbara. Good. I'm glad you joined us. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Good evening. Welcome. <clears throat> As everyone comes in, hopefully we can um, uh, get everyone on board here. And it would be awesome. It would be awesome if you could uh, join in on the chat. I wonder, uh, the, the live feed, I'm wondering if it's something I'm doing. It seems like it's something I'm doing, but that's the feeling I get. But capture, um, no, we don't want capture. Yeah, okay, I'm going to try, I'm going to try to get everything turned on that would possibly allow you or not allow you to come in. Um, so if you have, if you roll over to the left side of this Google um, Hangout, you get those toolbars, that toolbar on the left, right, as you roll over that. Down um, third from the bottom, it's got a control room. That may be where you want to set your video and audio feed right there. So I can mute my Muted and you can't hear me, but now you can. So that's where you're going to do all that. So roll over the left side there, or even up top. That 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 hover bar appears up top, so you can turn your video feed on there or not. Google Effects. No, we don't want that. Showcase screenshot. So there's two minutes. I'm gonna I'm gonna check our print real quick. I'll be right back. We're not getting very strong light on that feed. I'm going to put it under another light. I was getting kind of an even light on that one, so we're going to uh, transition this over. So I put in a new bank of lights, and uh, that'll print out fine. <coughs> so where are we, guys? Are we going to 
Am I going to get any questions? I'm in. Thanks, Phil. Okay, there's Phil. Good. Um, give me a video feed here, guys. Somebody jump in here so we can... So we can start this thing going here. We're already half an hour late. Jump in on the video, somebody. Give me a video feed. Or ask questions or something. Let's or we'll just sit here. If I'm gonna ramble too much unless the print comes out. But I will say this, there are, there are some very exciting things happening in the world of wet collodion, which um, I see anyway happening. And one of them is, is more people are getting into making negatives and prints. This is, I think it's, I think this is where a lot of effort should be focused on. Sim and I'll tell you why, simply for the fact that once you know how to make a negative, and and you can make it a, a good negative, a wet collodion negative. Um, the printing options are really unlimited, and this is why the wet collodion negative is the basis for all of these other types of of printing out processes or alternative processes, if you will, cyanotypes, gum bichromate, brome oil, carbon, collodion chloride, salt, albumin. I mean, they're all. It's it's all about. Um, the wet collodion negative. So making a positive will limit you to, I, I love positives, obviously. I've made thousands of them, they're beautiful. But making a positive will limit you in a lot of ways. And let me let me expound on that just a little bit. Just, to, okay, so here, we got, we got a question here um, from Israel. Um, hi, Quinn, just a question. Do you do, you do exclusively, do you, do you do exclusively with wet plate? How about daguerreotypes? Is there any plans for you instructing this practice? Yeah, you may not have, just to re-ask if this is relevant for today's video, what is, what is clothing collective? Is it a group sort of photo movement? Okay, yeah, that's 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 a good question. Uh, two, two things. I was just mentioning a few minutes ago with um, the international attention or interest in wet clothing, specifically China now for me. Um, I have now decided in the last year to, to devote all my energy to um, wet clothing. The daguerreotype, let, let, me, let, me, let me give you my feelings about the daguerreotype. Um, Daguerreans are, are interesting people that work in, in the contemporary process, the, the contemporary methods of it. Um, the um, the, mercury, the, the, the hot mercury process, not the Becquerel process, but the hot mercury process is, is fascinating. It's interesting. It's challenging. Um, I have a beautiful setup right around the corner with a uh, fume hood, uh, handmade um, fuming boxes, uh, hot uh, mercury pot from, um, um, what's his name, Alan? Bikus in um, New Zealand built me, or built, and, and I purchased one. Um, I got an air science fume hood. I've got a beautiful daguerreotype. Well, you've seen the camera, right? Um, let, let me, I'll show you the camera. Hold on. This is actually something small enough I can show on camera. Um, this is a beautiful little daguerreotype camera. It's got the ground glass um, as a pull-away piece. Here's the plate holder. Uh, this will do quarter plate to half plate, which is half plate is one of my favorite formats. I love quarter plate too with inserts. Nice little camera, nice little system. Um, another insert there for that looks like quarter plate or sixth plate. I'm not sure. And the ground glass slides out. So this is quarter plate and sixth plate. And then the, the full frame is, is half plate. Nice little system. Beautiful little camera. Uh, I put a, a Jamin Darlot lens on it. It's a cone lens, original leather cap. I think it's an F6 uh, two, 
I want to say 260. Hey, hey, Jeannie. Hey, you got in. Good. Uh, Corey, Corey, welcome. What's up, Quinn? After eight months of searching, I found an 810 camera. I'm slowly getting everything going. You should just starting with black, clear. Um, you know what? I suggest you start with uh, aluminum, Corey, just for the simple fact. I'm going to get sidetracked my o my ADD, my OCD, whatever I have. <laughs> it's going to flare up here in a second. Sorry. Let me put this away. Um, thanks for jumping in, Jeannie. She's just upstairs. <laughs> it's pretty cool, though, isn't it? Isn't this modern technology? Isn't this how you communicate with people, right, in your family? Just text them. They're upstairs. Beautiful little camera, though. Anyway. Let me set this down without breaking it. Back to Corey. Corey, I suggest that you start out with uh, um, aluminum, and here's why. Uh, and 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 as real, I'll get I'll get to your question here in just a second. Cool, and you too, Kevin. Just one sec, Corey. Aluminum, and uh, just simply for the fact that you won't have any peeling problems. Uh, you'll be able to practice technique of pouring and especially developing. That developing, you know that, that technique of developing. And um, you'll be able to uh, expedite the process so you don't have to clean or cut. There's fewer materials, fewer steps in the process. So aluminum, black aluminum, start with that. Then I would move to probably clear glass. And, and get familiar with that. It's going to be a drastic change because you're able to, you know, it's reflective on the black aluminum when you're when you're developing, uh, and you can see that real easy. Clear glass is going to be a little more challenged, both with cleaning and so it doesn't peel, and as well as watching the development technique. Those are going to be problems for you. Uh, they're problems for everyone, and so black aluminum is is, is what I recommend people starting with. Um, Oh, thank you, Dale. I appreciate you answering. Quinn organized a group of clothing. It's a form. Thank you. Yeah, so you can read. I don't think everybody can see this, so I don't think I need to reread this. But um, Collodian Collective, it, it, I started that group in 2009, and it, it changes. It varies. So we're going to move. We're, we're moving to China now, so it'll be under that umbrella for a little while. We did archer ceremony, as, uh, as Dale um, points out, which was awesome and very successful. And basically, it's just a, it's an umbrella organization or group that um, facilitates countries, people, groups, whatever, coming in and making the uh, uh, wet clothing accessible to, to the people. It's a, will I, would I dare say it's a form of uh, democratizing? Maybe in a little bit, in a way, right? Maybe digital did that, but we're, we're reintroducing the, another form of democratization of photography. Hey, 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 hey. We just saw, didn't I just see Mark, Mr. Zimmerman pop in here? I think I did. Where is he? Where'd he go? I seem to be, I don't know which way this feed is going. Sometimes it seems it's up and sometimes it seems it's, it's down. I can see, I can't see any video button. The chat button is a 3-3 three, three square icon in the upper right. So if you roll over the screen that way, you should have this. I uh, wonder if I can screen share this. Yeah, I can. Share. So, oh, <laughs> It went on infinitely. That was cool. Did you see that? Bunch of mirrors. Sorry. Back to so the chlorine chloride question. I better check the print. Better check the print. <clears throat> Looks a little bit different, doesn't it? Let's peel it back and I'll hold it up so you can see it. I don't want to spill my water. My glass is here. Let's see. Can't see that end, which is kind of a bummer. You know, 
they they make some contact printers. Sometimes I like this. They'll split the back um, too far on one side. It should maybe better. I have others that are split in the middle. They work much better, so you can see the print a lot easier. Uh oh, look at that! As I hold it up into the fluorescent light. Can you see that at all? I hope. I, I wanted you to see the flowers. Ooh, I really bent that paper too, but we're, this is just a test print. We'll see where we're at. Peel this back. Oh, you can't really see anything there, can you? A little bit of the roses. Can you see the roses there? So that's really what we're watching. I actually put this in the contact printer a little bit skewampus. I should have had the flowers down here on the big break. So I could peel it back and look at those. Those are that, that's what we're going to look to bronze over. Um, it's almost there. I'm going to go a little bit longer. This was uh, intensified years and years ago. Intensified in uh, um, silver nitrate. The intensification process. I'm going to throw it back in. I'm going to put my timer on three minutes here and alarm me. So. I don't walk away from it. So there's three minutes. Yeah, I just laid it under the UV and I could see the, the crease that I made in it, but that's okay. Anyway, so back to where we are. Yeah, the, the Clodian Collective, yeah, you're right. It is... Uh, Okay, uh, what's the difference between making positive and negatives? Okay, uh, the Clodian Collective, really quickly. It is one of the, it, you know, it's kind of, not kind of, it's open to really anyone to come in to help, um, all volunteer kind of stuff, right? To help establish um, large or, or small, usually large places to, to have a resource. Someone says, hey, I want to be the, the reset resource center for uh, wet clothing. I had a couple of them in Europe, like the in Barcelona, at the studio there. Um, that was a huge um, center for that. And also in Paris at the Santerie, the, the gallery that um, represented me. Um, basically, that's that's where those two things came under that umbrella. And of course, the the biggest thing, the Archer project. So. Um, Okay, oh, Dale Wilson, Quinn sent you an email on how Google Plus instructs you to control video feed. My camera's DOA. Where did you send it, Dale? Did you send it to my email or uh, Facebook? But probably email. Um, I'll look at that. That's obviously it's something I'm doing wrong here because someone would be in here um, already. Uh, someone PC is in here. Question, when I'm shooting on location, there's no running water. After the fix, is that... Is there a faster way to wash the plate besides just changing the water in the water bath a few times? Can I put the plate in another chemical after the fix? Um, depending on what kind of fixer you're using, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, you can actually use glycerin, 100% pure glycerin. I have a bottle in there. Um, and mix it 50-50 with uh, DH2O or uh, distilled water. And... Uh, don't even fix it in the field if you don't want to. Just just develop it, arrest the development, make sure, you know wash it off a little you know a minute or two um, in in a tray. Make sure it's make sure all the developers arrested. Let's say, and then pour the glycerin, half glycerin, half water over the plate, and that will um, keep the plate moist. Um, you know it's a humectant, right? It's a it'll keep the glycerin will keep the water. It'll keep the plate moist. Put in the box or pan whatever you have, and wait until you get home to fix it and wash it. So I I would recommend using KCN in the field, and if you're really really in trouble um, and you you don't have even enough water to wash KCN plates out there, um, do the glycerin trick. Keep them moist. Do it when you get home. Um, the, uh, if you're using hypo, I definitely. There's no way, really, you can fix hypo properly in the field. So you'd want a gliss glycerin bath and, and wash when you got home anyway. So depending on what fix you're using. Uh, to Mark Zimmerman, 
Oh, they're having a chat in there. Um, oop, I got to go here. I'm going to grab the print. Yeah, let's see what we can do with this print here. I started to bronze over on the flowers there. See that crease in it? Well, you can really see the crease. So I'm going to take it in the dark room. I don't know how I can. I need to definitely need to figure out a different camera. Now I'll take it in the dark room and throw it in a wash pan. I'll, I'll wash all the unexposed silver, or all the the, the, the unexposed silver. I'm thinking a pot a plate. I'll wash all the uh, uh, silver off the paper. And then we'll uh, we'll uh, go ahead and fix it and tone it, and I'll walk you through that process too. I'll, I'll answer your question when I come back, Robert. Washing the print. <clears throat> so let's go to Robert's question. And you can't see my board. I wish I had a whiteboard in here, but we'll we'll deal with it. Um, I like to write things out when I'm doing this. Robert's question is: Is what's the difference between a uh, making positives and versus negatives? If the question is, and clarify this for me, Robert, are you asking methodology, or are you asking chemistry, or are you asking in general, or uh, how to how to determine that. Um, I'll start by saying this. I'll, I'll, I'll cover the gamut here. Uh, the difference between a wet collodion negative and a wet collodion positive is really, really simple. Oh, wait. Select. Let me Instructions for doing a video. Hold on. You sent me that link, Robert, so let me see this. Currently answering. Oh. Oh. Hey guys, I'm learning, right? He's gone again. Who who's gone? Oh, me. Okay. Oh, okay. I I got gotcha. you. So I can put currently answering. Okay, we're working it out. So Corey, I got you uh, black aluminum. Start with that and work your way through. Um, and I'm just going to go through here. Instructions here. Jeannie just sent me some instructions. And so let me see. Jeannie, if you can research that and come down and tell me if I'm the one that's preventing people from coming in, uh, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of reinforcing that um, I'm an egomaniac because here I am in my, my live broadcast and it's only me. It's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> I think it's funny. And I can't, it's like, I, I want you guys in here and I don't know how to get you in here. And, and here I sit uh, I love technology, but I guess I don't understand this technology too well. But it's funny. Inside joke, maybe, I guess. Huh? So let's, let's continue with answering these questions. So the plates wash, or the, the prints washing in there. Um, follow up. Okay, let, let's do this. Follow up. Can I fix the plate, then put 50% glycerin? Yes, you can do that, PC. Yes. If you want to do that, absolutely. You don't need to. So if you knew you were going to do that, um, but maybe you want to show the plate in the field, I guess, too, maybe. I don't know. But, yeah, you can do that for sure. Um, excuse me. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Woo! Salud. Gesundheit. We don't want any souls flying around in my studio, right? Um, so, yes, you can do that. Uh, sent you an email. Let, let me see if I can quickly just take a look at um, Dale's email here real quick because I'd really love to get you guys in on here. Uh, Dale Wilson, is your email turned on? Okay. Go to uh, Hangout Air. Move your mouse to the left. Uh huh. 
and click on the camera. I, uh -huh. You choose yes or no for broadcast. All guests, yes, those are all set to yes. Those are all, in fact, let me just check them again. Oh, no, wait. Broadcast settings. Our guests, as guest joins, hide their audio and video from my broadcast. I said no. I selected no on that. Broadcast a large video that I see to my audience and hide other video feeds. Um, no. I'm just going to leave all that no, and we'll see if we can get it going. Where's it? Back to the Q&A. Thanks, though, Dale. I appreciate that. Um, so changing the water. Okay, when I'm shooting. Oh, this is really cool. So I say done, and that question goes away. No wonder I was getting confused. Uh, when I'm shooting on location, there's no water. Yep. So you know the glycerin, half glycerin, half uh, DH2O. When I say DH2O, I mean distilled or demineralized or RO water. Zero ppm water, no, nothing in the water. What are the differences? Yeah, let me put Roberts up. What are the differences between making positives and negatives? This is really important. So back to that. So the difference in a nutshell of a positive and a negative. What is a, what is a positive in wet collodion? Well, positive in wet collodion is a very, very underexposed negative, usually on a piece of black material or on clear glass that, that's then backed with some kind of black material. Um, that's what we know as a positive. So I've been a photographer for 30 years, so all you um, men and women out there that, that have, have worked in this business for a while, you'll know this. You, you've had this happen to you many times, I bet. Um, I'd, I'd be sitting, I'd be sitting in a studio like this, and I'd go in the dark room, soup some film, process some black and white film, usually you know 35 millimeter. Then I'd come out, and I'd have a light source, and I'd be looking like this, and I have a light behind me, and there's a thin negative there, and I turn that piece of film just a little bit, and that that not the transmitted light. You see, it's thin. The the transmitted light will tell you the negative is thin, but you tilt it just a little bit, and that backlight had hit it. Now you're getting reflective light, and if there's something dark behind it, usually if you have a bright light and there's something dark behind it, you can see a positive image on that film. That's what an ambrotype is. It's a very, very thin negative, and we back it with something black, and then we want reflected light off of it. That's why it's so important to have these galleries lit really well. I was talking to Phil, Philip Chin, Phil, earlier. Um, or not talking to him, replying on a, to a post on on uh, Facebook. And he was asking me about mounting and showing work. I want to show you guys have seen these, but I want to show these to you more more in a live fashion. By the way, these were uh, varnished with uh, shellac in 2004. These are these are black glass ambrotypes, right? I can't see and produce at the same time. I wonder if you guys are seeing those backwards. I'm seeing it backwards, but I guess you're not. Um, so very important what kind of glass you put on it, and very important what kind of light you show these images in. Uh, black glass positives need a lot of light. Thin negatives need a lot of light, reflected light. So now coming to the more crucial question, what is a negative? The differences in making a negative and a positive are quite uh, simple. The ambrotype, the thin negative, the ambrotype or positive, let's just say positive. The positive is so thin that there is no way for a printing out process, albumin, salt, collodion chloride, any of those, um, with some exception, I'll uh, caveat there. Um, the, 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 the silver, the, the buildup, the density is not, uh, it's not dense enough, and the pot or the printing out paper will just you'll just turn black, basically. And if you have a tiny bit of highlight, that would be maybe like a mid-tone in a real negative, right? So so try try to print an ambrotype on, uh, on collodion chloride or salt or albumin, anything. You'll see it just turns to a black mess. There's not enough information in a positive to print on printing out paper, or print out paper, printing out paper, or pot paper. Now, what you can do, you guys have seen these as well too, but I'll grab them. What you can do is you can take a bright ambrotype. This is a fiber-based 
gold toned enlarged um, image from a half plate wet collodion negative. And what you can do is you can print out on modern developing out paper with bright ambrotypes. That's, that's, a, that's one of my biggies, right? Bright ambrotypes make good modern developing out paper prints. Wonderful, beautiful. On the other hand, and if the, the guys, if you've ever been to my workshops, you know all about these prints. It, this was in the Archer show, and this is what I wrote on the back. I talk about um, using his original formula and making the negative in the center and then doing an, uh, an albumin print and a salt print. Uh, a salt print and albumin print. A wax salt print and an albumin print from these. That negative will not print on modern developing out paper. So the rule holds that density and contrast are king when it comes to negatives. The question is, is how do you achieve that? Is it all achieved through exposure? It can be if you're really, 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 really good, like a Timothy O'Sullivan or a Alexander Gardner or a William Henry Jackson, who had a studio not far from here, uh, or Carlton Watkins. I mean, how, you know, we can go on and on and on. Uh, if you're really good, you can do that. 99.9% .9 of my negatives, and if you were here last weekend, you could have seen this. I, I, can, I can get really close right out of the camera. Foundation negative, I can get really cr close to printing out. But there's always that little tiny push that I want, just that little tiny clarity. So what I have to do is I have to take that really, that bright ambrotype, that overexposed positive on clear glass, I take it in the dark room, and I redevelop it. And how I redevelop that, is, and in this series, you're going to see this. You're, and, and I'll figure out how to take you in the dark room and do all this stuff live. Um, I take it in the dark room, and what I do is I rehalogenate the plate. So I have a, basically a bright ambrotype, a, an overexposed ambrotype in my hand. And what I do is I take it in the dark room, and the first, the first thing I put on it is iodine, a diluted mixture of iodine just like you put on your cuts. Um, I'd recommend you go to like a big animal veterinarian store and get you a bottle. I, mine's 7%. You could go to a local drugstore and use 1%. Just a, uh, you want to dilute it down to kind of a, a red wine color, a, you know, something, something like that, a, a, a dark, medium dark red color, not iodine color, not straight. Dilute it down with distilled water. Pour it on the plate. What happens there? Is you've actually um, activated or rehalogenated those silver that that sil that silver iodide that reduced its uh, redu was reduced down to the pure metallic state of silver with the developer. You now reactivate that, and make it sensitive again to light somewhat. Is it pure silver iodide? No, it just reacts a little bit. So so it, ta it, it in layman's terms, it would sound like this: the iodine will open it up to receive both light energy and especially chemical energy, if you will. So we rehalogenate, wash the iodine off, go over to the window or, a, or a UV, some source of UV, expose that for a little bit, and you can actually see this. We'll, we'll actually watch this. You'll see the bright ambrotype before with transmitted light, and then you'll see the bright ambrotype just even after iodine uh, rehalogenation. Once it's rehalogenated and you've exposed a little bit to, to build a little bit of density there, bring it back into the dark room and under low light, you take distilled water, pyrogalic acid, and a little bit of citric acid as a restrainer. The pyro is the developer, the citric acid is the restrainer, and the DH2O is the carrier. Put a few drops of silver nitrate, nine silver nitrate right out of your silver bath in a little cup, fill it up with the pyro redeveloper, put it on the plate, take it off the plate, put it on the plate, take it off the plate. That pyro and that silver will build the density in the highlights in the beginning, mid-tones, and all the way down. You cannot redevelop a negative that doesn't have clear shadow areas. You've got to be able to put your finger behind there and see straight through the, the glass to your finger. If that's not clear and you redevelop, you're going to mud, mud up the whole image. It won't print. So there are some things you have to have in the beginning. After it's redeveloped, you're now able to dry it, varnish it, and then print it, right? So that's the difference between positives and negatives, which is a huge difference. Um, people, 
um, get my book and then they end up getting my negative. It really, I call it a supplement. It's a book. I guess it's a book, but it's really a supplement to the positive book. And it just outlines uh, the, the, the process of making the paper, the process of um, redevelopment, uh, two different kinds of redevelopment, making albumin paper, quoting chloride paper, that kind of stuff. And they're, they're surprised um, to learn how much, how, how the nuances affect the, this image making. I mean, and they are, they're very, it's a very nuanced kind of thing. So having said that, we should go check on that print. Um, so select, so yeah, there's just people helping out. Um, okay, here's Robert. Uh, yeah, okay, Rob. There, um, hey, Quinn, I only have experience with salt printing. Is there a pro con for salting, salt printing versus chloride printing? Yes, very good question, Rob. Very good question. And I believe, I believe, uh, I believe you're in Chicago, if I'm not mistaken, the Illinois area. Um, so the difference between salt printing and collodion chloride, a huge, huge difference. Uh, number one, salt printing is a lot easier, a lot, a lot more simple. And again, in this series, I'll walk you through how to make paper, how to make the sizing and salt solution and, and the whole nine yards. The problem with salt paper is they tend to be matte. They tend to be flat, right? So you either live with that flatness or you wax them. Basically, you shine them up with beeswax and lavender oil or Renaissance wax or something. Um, uh, there's kind of a density problem as well, too. In the, in the shadow areas of a salt print, sometimes it, it becomes muddied and somewhat. And so that, that wax or, or whatever material you put on it will, will darken those and and increase the contrast between the light and the dark in the salt print. So that's some of the problem um, with salt printing. Compared to, uh, I, I, you said chloride printing, you are chloride printing. That's a, a salt print is a silver chloride print, by the way. But I think you meant collodion chloride printing, which is um, collodion with a strontium chloride in it uh, acting as the salt and collodion acting as the carrier. And what, what, it, what happens is, you have the burrito paper, you have that layer of, of clay, if you will, barium, then you pour collode, salted collodion on it, let it dry, put a negative on it, expose it, and pull it out, wash it like we're doing now, fix it, and tone it, you have a beautiful glossy surface. So there's no waxing, there's no, no nothing like that. And so, on the other hand, the... Um, the, the, the investment you put in the front end of collodion chloride is a little more difficult making the paper. The paper is a little more expensive, but in the end you don't have waxing and you have this wonderful gloss finish. You can also do collodion chloride in a matte finish too, but you know, I, my vocabulary has never, I've never enjoyed um, um, matte prints. I don't like super glossy either, but I do love collodion chloride prints. Um, there's Jeannie. Thank you, sweetie. Let's see. She just handed me this. You have been summoned by the Aurora Police Department. Oh, my God. This is unbelievable. No. These are instructions. Start a video called Download and Install the Latest. Yes, we got that. Um, check, check the video icon. Yeah, I don't. It's not. Add people. Oh, add people. Click invite people. Hold on here. Let's see. Where, where are we? Click invite people. Let's see. Plugin? Do you have the plugin? The Hangout plugin? Yeah, you must have that. Hangout toolbox. Well, I'm on, so I must have it. Oh! Oh, my God, you guys. Jeannie just hooked me up. I think. Uh, circles. Let's see. If you guys are any of you in my circle, you just got that. See if you can join now. See if you can get in. So, uh, okay. So, Rob, that does that answer your question? Uh, in, in a nutshell, less work on the salt printing, but a matte finish, and it would add another step to it, waxing it, or yeah, waxing it, or collodion chloride. A little more work up front. Uh, the paper being uh, no, the papers you can get the papers, no problem. Um, 
In fact, you can use some cans and digital paper, uh, but providing that, that glossier, um, um, better looking image. Um, okay, so let's go to the next one. I would, if I could give you a video feed, that is, what is happening? Um, not, not really sure. Um, let me see if I can invite you. And let's see if we can do that. Let me see Tony Tidswell. Let's see if I can. Tony Tids. Yeah. Oh, maybe I can do this, guys. Maybe it's me. I see. I, well, I know it's me, right? I mean, who? They want. Uh... Oh, Tony, I just sent you an invite. Let me know how that goes. Uh, I could give you a video feed. That Luciano, is. hey, Jeannie's there. Um, Here I am. Not, not really Yay! <laughs> God, I never get to talk to her because I'm always down here. Great. <laughs> right. Look good. Okay. So if somebody else kind of jump in. I can have 10 people in here. It's easier for me to answer the question. Um, Regarding, uh, Luciano, regarding positive and negative, since I print with gum dichromate, ooh, I, well, I know it's me, right? Oh, gum dichromate, okay, yeah. Do you think positive, yes, you know what, Luciano, I, try that, yeah, you're, you're on to something there for sure. Um, I would pick a bright positive to do that with, actually, and, and I think you'll have success, yes, it, uh, I'm, I'm sure of it. Uh, the contrast, uh, he, he, he's talking about dichromates because <laughs> crank the contrast up, right? Won't, won't crank the density, but we'll crank the contrast up. See, try it and see. See, see what it looks like. Um, Azrael thanking Dale for that. Uh, let, me, let me see if I can invite. Man, if I have to invite every single person, um, I guess I will. I guess I'll have to do that. Um, who else is in here? Robert's in here. Robert joined the video call. Yay! Robert, I don't see Robert in here yet, but let's see. Invite. Yeah, my bad. Yay, yeah. there he is. Tony, welcome. Can you can you hear me, Tony? Okay, well, that's okay. So, all right, Mark. Yes, there it is. I lost that one. Loud and clear in Oklahoma. Which book did you write that goes over the wet plate negative making process? Um, yeah, it's the chemical pictures. Making Robert in here. Yeah. Uh, negatives and let's see. Invite. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> wow, it's slow. I'm getting all over the place, huh? So, um, can you hear me? I, think, I can hear you. I don't know if you can hear me yet. I can hear you. Okay. Well, we're getting there. I've That's clicked okay. about 50 buttons. Oh, boy. Yeah. So so download the app. You'll get some feedback in the beginning, but once it straightens out, we'll, we'll all be good. All right, Mark. Yes, there it is. I lost that one. Loud and clear in Oklahoma. Which book did you write that goes over the wet plate negative making process? Um, I'm going to miss you, Tony, because you have uh, feedback coming through from me, the lag time, but you can jump in any time. Hey, Quinn. Uh, yeah, good. Okay, good. I'm getting rid of these questions here as I go through. Um, so I'll uh, I'll get Luciano in here. Wow, I have to invite. So, um, can you hear me? I, think I can hear you. I don't think you can hear me. Yet. I can hear you. Uh, okay, I've clicked That's about okay. 50 buttons. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, I'll learn the app. You get some feedback in the beginning, but once it straightens out, we'll, we'll all be good. All right. Okay, here we go. Let me see. Uh, 
Let me clear these uh, questions off of here. I can see it, but have no idea. Okay, yeah, that's Tony again there. We'll get that off. When do you leave for China? Yeah, uh, China's going to be fun. Okay, just to re-ask if this is relevant to uh, what, what, uh, what, yeah, okay. I think I sent you an invite as well, too. I hope I did. Let me know if I haven't sent you an invite and you want to get in. I sent Dale one. Um, I think. Let me make sure I sent Dale one. If you get two, Dale, I, forgive me. I'm losing track of... Uh, I must have because it, it, won't, it doesn't show you up anymore here. Okay. Uh, Tim says, Tim Layton. Uh, let me see if I can get Tim in. Sorry, I'll do this in the front end the next time for sure, guys. I'll, I'll get uh, I'll get this hooked up and Tim Layton, there he is. Invite. Okay, Tim says um, <clears throat> I'm surprised by the Canson Infinity 2271 Burita papers for inkjet printing, but works for the Aristotype process. Looks like it is only made in eight and a half by eleven. Hold on, hold on. Let me show you guys something. couple of things. No, Tim, the burrito comes in this size. In fact, that's what I'm printing out on this morning, 17 inches by 22 inches. It's the, uh, uh, yeah, photographique, the burrito, uh, 310 gram square meter, 25 sheets, 17 by 22. That's the Canson Infinity. In fact, that's exactly what we're printing out on. This is the washed print so far. I'll go fix it now. But that's the wash print, and still just wet. I'm going to trim it down on the trimmer over here. Uh, oh, yeah, and I've got some uh, got some silver stains on the top of it here. This Canson, I'll show it to you right here, guys. You're going to see it right here. Okay, this is what I was telling you about, Tim. I hope I hope you're still here, Tim, because Tim was asking about this. On the back of it, you see that on my fingers. And what gets on the front, I have to get it back in the wash now, too. That is an anti-curling chemical that Canson puts on it for digital prints so they don't do what they're doing here. You don't get them wet. But you need to be very cautious of that and wash that off properly before you fix it and especially before you tone it. So let me go throw this in the wash again. Washed all the anti-curling off of it, and I'm going to cut it down now. Then we'll fix it and tone it. Let's see what we get. I just don't need all that extra material in effect or the tone. We cut it down to that, and it's clean. I'm going to go throw it in the fix, and uh, I'll be right back out.
when you hear the buzzer go off, it means that my first uh, fix is finished. And then I'll do a little wash on it. Then we'll tone it and let you see the print from that negative. We'll look at the negative as well, too. So coming back yeah, to the question. Well. Hey, there's Dale. Welcome aboard, Dale. Um, you have entered the Twilight Zone. See, I, well, I know it's me, right? I mean, you, you want, uh, but Connie, I, Dale, say something to us. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Awesome. I had to go take off my pajamas, buddy. That's why I wasn't on earlier. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I actually get up very, very early in the morning every day for some weird reason. So thank you, Jeannie, for turning us on to this. That was uh, Jeannie's um, invention there that got me through. So did you see Did you see the Canson paper, Dale, that I just showed? Uh, yes. The 1722. Um, that's actually what I'm printing out right now on. Is this print we're doing this morning? That is, uh, that's the, the 1722 Canson cut down. Got it. So if you want to do them, if you want to do them real big, you can. Okay. Yeah, and Dale got that one. So let's see. Hi, man. I'm watching here, but currently grading cover. Yeah. No worries, Kevin. Uh, stay in your your stay incognito. We know where you're at. Uh, you. Kevin Holt again. I teach art. Uh, I'll select this one. I teach art and art and tech at CU, uh, University of Colorado. So this format is great. I do have a question about making wet plate and cold temps outside in the field for hours. Is it possible? Absolutely. Very much so. In fact, <clears throat> I would say you're going to have greater success in temperatures from say 10 to 20 degrees Celsius, say 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, then you will from temperatures of you know 35 to 40 or Celsius or uh, 85 to 100 degrees. You're going to have more problems on the, 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 the hotter end, the more molecular activity as the heat, heat generates than you will on the cool end. The caveat here is not too cool. Now, uh, Kevin asking this and and we're both in Colorado here so when we say cold what do we mean by cold we have to define that um, no Kevin not in uh, minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit no you're not going to be making play you probably won't even be outside then but 50 to 70 degrees in, in temperatures in temperatures that are um, say you know uh, let's do Fahrenheit say say below freezing say 20 25 degrees no problem. The only thing you have to do is sometimes you'll have to you'll have to have a cool cooler with you, and sometimes you'll have to put your chemistry in the cooler between plates, and that's kind of a pain if you've got a, a silver bath that's not in a travel tank or something you can secure and put in a cooler. It becomes a problem. So <clears throat> keep a cooler just like you do in the the summertime, but have this cooler for the winter time, and you can go down. I've made plates in 20 degree Fahrenheit weather easily minus minus 15, minus 20 degrees Celsius, no problem. In fact, like I said, collodion actually loves that. Just keep in mind that the, the, the chemicals will start going funky and, and doing strange things, especially the silver bath, around 40 degrees, the actual temperature of the chemical, right? Not the ambient temperature, the, chemi the temperature of the chemical. So keep that in mind and, and you, you can do it, you, no problem. Um, I need to invite Ufus. Ufus, where are you, brother man? Let me let me throw Ufus in here. I need to invite more people. There he is. Invite Ufus. Click on that that invite. Who else wants to come in? Anybody? There's Tony. We'll get this down, guys. This is just the first go round, so we'll get this down. No problem. And we all work in wet plates, so we're extremely patient people. Extremely. We have the patience of Job times a thousand. We work in this process that's frustrating and months and months and years and years to accomplish something with. So we can get through this technology bump. It was my it was my fault. Next live broadcast, I'm gonna have a whole list of people and you're gonna be in here before I am. So 
Okay. Uh, Robert, uh, did you get an invite, Robert? I've got to send you. I think I tried to find you, and I couldn't find you on. Oh, I hear the buzzer. That's my first uh, My first fixes. There, there's Robert Beach. I hope, God, I don't know which one you are, brother. There's so many Robert Beaches. I don't know which one you are, brother, man. You're going to have to hook me up. I don't know. I'll be right back, guys. I'm going to switch the print. Smooth. Tony, this is Dale. I'm just curious. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Dale, yeah. I'm just curious. I've just got this uh, toolbar here and trying to make some sense of this. Can you hear me? Absolutely. So I guess one has to be careful what they say now. Uh, yeah, that's why I've said nothing. <laughs> okay, guy. You know what? But do you understand this thing? I mean, I've used Hangout before, but this has got so many things that are... Let's see if I can get you through the spinning door here. <clears throat> hey, we're just talking about... This. I got you in the dark room now. Can you, you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no problem. Should we be muted, though? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to put you on mute. Okay. <laughs> when you want to talk, when you want to talk, just unmute yourself. So there's our fixed print. This will scare you guys, I know. Here's our fixed print washing there. Oh my God! What happened to it? We'll watch when the toner comes back. We'll we'll show you how to tone this up. Here's what I what did. The hell? I used to... We hang paper here, usually clothing chloride, and uh, and over here, um, the wall gets a little messy from it. But let me show you something here. I gotta go red light. Um, well, looks like Quinn Quinn shut you up there, Gene. Did, oh, oh, sorry. You can. Come on, Jeannie. What you call okay. Just unmute you yourself. <laughs> yeah. So I can take you guys in the dark room if my batteries is batteries charged. I can take you in here. Um, so for toner, this is what we're going to use today. We're going to use uh, Tetanol Gold Toner. This is my favorite. I don't have much left in here, but once this print is washed, oh, th this is what I was going to show you. So here's my cooler with my clothing chloride and all my goodies in it. And so this last batch, normally I make it in a blackened wine bottle so I can turn the white light on. All the students prints in here that are, wow, that's kind of abstract. And this time we made it in an open bottle. So I won't keep that toward the light much. It's, it's a emulsion, right? Clothing chloride. I'm going to actually pour a plate, uh, a piece of paper with you here. Let me see if I can find a position that I can put this at. Can you guys see me there okay? Yeah. Why am I not on main stage here? Let's put let's put it up on uh, present to everyone. Oh, okay. Can you see me full frame okay? Okay, so so I'm gonna get a piece of paper out first. And why I have the why I have the red light on here is because this is obviously it has silver nitrate in it, right? I mean it's clothing chloride. Here's a piece of burrito paper. I'm just going to well, I wonder if the light from the monitor. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I'm going to fold it in half and I have my trusty scissors here, and I'm going to cut this in half. So our print is over there washing, and I'm going to put this piece back so I can use it at another time. So this paper has an emulsion side and a back side to it, so keep in mind when you're using burrito paper which side is which. In this particular case, I'm going to put a little lip on the paper right here around the edges here. Let me do that. I use a ruler to do it, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not. I need to figure out how to 
get a camera in here, set my quoting chloride over there, it's getting quite a bit of light. See if I use a contact printing frame to hold that. Yeah. So what I'm going to do on the outside is I'm just going to take, I don't know, five, five millimeters, put it along the edge like that, and then just fold, fold this up like this. Really crank it over like that. What you're doing is you're building a little boat, a little uh, holder for the, for the collodion. Do it on the other side here. Five millimeters, quarter of an inch, however you want to measure it. Do it here. All four sides, of course. Do it there. And one more time here. So now we have this beautiful piece of burrito paper that will hold the, the collodion. So let me put you back up here. Hold on. I'm going to go for another round of fix here in a second. So now what I have is I have a little boat here. I have a little, uh, a little container. So this has got the barium, the clay on it, so it's not going to allow the solvents to go through with the collodion. I'm going to hold it. Well, let's see if I can. I might have to back off a little way so you guys can see this. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bend that edge down just a little. This is going to be my drain corner here. You'll see me do this here in just a second. Let me see if I can. i got to watch the. Yeah, here we go. I can do this. So I'm going to hold the paper like this in my hand. You can actually put it on a. You can actually put it on a. You know what? I'll do that. Hold on. Let me show you. This, this is kind of. I don't mess with the glass anymore because. Um, I just do it free by hand. But let me do it this way. I'm going to take a piece of glass. I'm actually going to take a piece of blue tape. So just a regular sheet of just regular old window glass. A little bit of blue tape here. Let me grab my blue tape. Yeah. Where's my job? There it is. I, I, do these, I do these workshops, and then I lose everything. So just some blue tape. What? Some painter's tape? Take a little piece of painter's tape, roll it on, roll it up like you're going to stick a piece of paper to a piece of glass, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. There's my drain corner. I'm just going to put it on the back of the paper like this. I'm going to put that paper on a piece of glass like this. So now we've got the paper taped to a piece of glass, right? Now I can hold it like I'm flowing regular collodion. So here we go. Clean that lip off. Collodion's kind of nasty around the top of the jug there. Never shake this stuff up. Once you make it, just leave it be. So I'm going to pour a big puddle in the center here, just like flowing a collodion plate. And then we go A. If you know my techniques or you have my books, A, B, C, and watch the drain portion. The drain is the the drain is the indicator. You see that quoting chloride coming off of there? Watch it when it starts dripping. It's going to turn into what I call a snot mode here. <laughs> it's going to drip, and then it's going to turn into. I hope I'm not exposing my quoting chloride to. Is that a technical it. term, Quinn? Yeah, yeah, it's a technical. Snot is definitely a technical term. And guess what? There it is. There it goes. And look at that. Once I know I won't get it on my back book, I'll uh, get it close to you. That's a technical term right there. What? Little piece on my back book. Take the paper off. Take the tape off the back if you want. Plug up your jar, jug. Whoop! Plug up your jug there. Although I'm well ventilated, it is still collodion. And straighten your paper out. I want to try to show you these striations on this. I might be ruining this paper by exposing it to so much light. But I want to show you the wet striations on that piece of paper if you can see them. I'm going to hang this up right here in the red light. Hey, my MacBook is initiated with collodion chloride. Hang it up. There it is. 
we'll let it dry, and it's. I'll show you. I'll show you the finish on it after it dries. You won't believe it. It's 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 like a factory finish. It's it's you won't you can't tell the difference between a manufactured piece of uh, collodion chloride. I love this paper. I do. It's a wonderful paper. I am going to uh, set you down for just a second here and work at the counter. Uh, now that I have you in here, you guys can kind of watch me for a second. So I have to stay in red light while we're while we're doing uh, the uh, floating chloride paper there. But what I can do is I can start initiating this. Let's see what we get with this. I'm going to don a pair of gloves, and we're going to tone that print with some gold tone. Man, I got a ton of paper in here. Woo! That's a good thing. It's a very good thing. And to don a pair of gloves if my my hands are wet. So <clears throat> right now it's uh, 16 degrees Celsius and 36 percent humidity in here. 16 degrees Celsius and 36 percent humidity. So what? 60 degrees or no, yeah, 62 degrees or something like that. Let's put you up over here now. Maybe I can find spots to work in the dark room with this, but I haven't done that to this point. Maybe over here. Put you right on the the dark sink here. Okay. So here's my print. I'm going to gold tone this bad boy here. I know you're saying, oh, my God, he's doing that in the red light. Yeah. But, you know, I'll, uh, I'll take it out in the white light here in a minute and show it to you. I've got a pretty good gauge, a pretty good handle on how much toning and what we want to get out of this. So I'm just toning it like this for about, I'm going to go four minutes on this. I think four minutes will give us what we want on this print. Never stick your fingers in that gold tone. It's nasty stuff. This is a borax toner, a borax-based toner, basically. And we're going to take it out. Um, I have a pretty good idea. We're a couple of minutes out here. Bear with me. Here's the print so far. I, if I didn't have that, you know what I can do? Maybe. Here's the print so far. What I can do, possibly, let me look at this. Hold on just a second. It's toned. It's done. It's finished. At least the way I like to tone. So two two minute two minutes in the toner two minutes in the toner. I don't know where I got four from. Oh, it's a different negative. That's why. Pour my gold tone back in. Very expensive stuff. You want to save that as much as you can. Cap it back up. Put it on the shelf. So when you have a really nice dark room to work in like this, um, I know I'm spoiled to death with this stuff, but um, it makes life a lot easier. Um, in a sense, always, always tone, by the way, always tone in a flat bottom tray, never in a rib tray. You'll have problems. You'll have massive problems. Should we go look at this print now that i got a little bit of gold tone washed off of it? Let's go take a look and see what we end up with as our paper is drying over here. Let me dry my hand off. I don't want to grab my MacBook. i got to figure out some kind of camera system so I can... Get you guys in here. I was hoping I could do it with my GoPro, and maybe I can eventually. Let's take a look at our paper. Getting there. The striations are still there. It's pretty cool, though. It's still, still very cool in here. So, probably just exposed it. Flash the paper. Let's go back through the, the slider here. So it's like you're with me. Oh man, we can't fit together here. We did though. 
Uh oh. So you, maybe you need to uh -oh. just click on yourself then? Uh oh. I've been on this small screen the whole time? Oh, shoot. Well, we lost that one. There's the gold tone print. Queen, just to let you know, I've got you on full screen, no problem. Good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Maybe they can change it themselves. If I'm not full screen and you want to see what I'm doing, uh, switch me up to full screen. Nice. So kind of a, let me grab that negative again. There it is. Yes, please, if you wouldn't mind. Where is it located? Uh, it's the left sink. So I picked this negative to, to print with you this morning to, to try to show you that this isn't the best negative to print from. The roses look okay, right? And now let's look at it, how it translated to collodion chloride paper. I got some funky reflections from the red room over there, so forgive me, but can you see that, guys? Maybe tilt it down like that. So the roses look great. I mean, actually, it doesn't look bad, surprisingly enough. Again, this is an intensified negative, so keeping in mind with the transmitted light, that's the density that you're looking at there. So from that to that, let me see if I can dry it off a little bit. And look at it as a positive. Awful. Partially, that's why I don't intensify anymore. I only do redevelopment. This was intensified and had an imbalance in the, the silver right up here. Created that. So there's not really clear glass, which um, didn't really affect the print that much at all. Not much at all. So Collodion chloride paper on Canson digital printing paper. This is digital Canson paper. So keeping in mind that um, you'd want to make, uh, you know, next time we next time we meet up. Oh, here's that here's that stuff coming. Here it is, Dale. This is what I was telling you about. I see it now as it's drying. This film on the print. That milky anti curl stuff, you've really got. I haven't washed this much, that's why it's showing up. But you've really got to watch that on this paper. It does a fine job with a good negative and good collodion chloride uh, emulsion. But man, make sure you wash that stuff off. I'm actually going to go throw this. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, you can see that, um, nit uh, that nitrate stain up in, the, up in this corner a little bit. You can see that. But I got to get this in here before I. That milky stuff attaches itself. You put it in the washer. <clears throat> so let's talk about density for a minute. That that thin negative or that not so great negative that we just printed versus something like this. So as I can't even get any transmitted light on it, can I? As you look at that negative versus uh, the other negative, you can see what kind of density you really actually you really need. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this in the print frame with a piece of collodion chloride that I now know is dry and I'll print out this is a whole plate I think I made this in Germany I did was that no that was a different one I've got a print out of this somewhere look at the density you see that this is vignetting from my small lens of course but look at the density in there so guess what guys we're gonna go put this on a piece that other piece of collodion chloride I'll take you in there why not yeah. I'll take you in here. I'm just worried that I don't have enough arms to do all this. It's a one man it's a one man dark uh, dark room door.
right. So let me set you down here. Get you a good view here. Hey, you know what? I can actually, I don't want to destroy my negative, though. Let me set that up there. I can actually build you up a little bit, I think. Hold on. Build you up just a tad. Yeah, this has got a really nice, uh, if I remember this negative pro correctly, this has got a really nice uh, look to it. I'm going to put you up just a little bit higher here. There we go. Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to take this piece of collodion chloride paper. Hopefully, I'm going to cut the edges off over. The, I'm just going to trim the edges off of this over the garbage can over here, real quick. Oh yeah, looks really good. Really good. It's dry. Realize how fast that dried. You know, we just have to check for a minute. Come back in. I mean, it's cool here, so I could it could go another couple of minutes, but another few minutes. But I'm gonna I'm gonna let it go with that. Call it good. Put my scissors away. I think this will be good. Okay, contact printer. Negative. That'll work. We use this one. We didn't spill any collodion on it. So my contact printers. I got several. Can you see that? If I move down here, you can. Sorry, I'm all messy here from cutting stuff up all day. So how I work this is I put the contact printer down like that, put the paper on top, fits just beautifully. Emulsion to emulsion, right? You know that. Emulsion to emulsion. And sheet of glass over the top. And then the printing frame. Jeannie, you got yeah. a little boy down here crying. <laughs> Can you hear him? Yeah. Where is he? Oh, if I, I thought I was muted. I'll mute yourself if you want. <laughs> I, I, I hear our cat. I hear our cat. There it is. Let's go print this out. That's washing all that milky crap off of there. Just be, be aware of that if you get the cans and paper. Laptop's a little too big to be carrying around. I'll get I'll get my uh, GoPro or something hooked up for sure. All right, let's put this bad boy under the light. Let's time it for. Uh, let's give it four minutes. I got some rocking LED UV over there. Let's give it four minutes. When you say under the light, Quinn, are you say do you have a UV bank? Yes, UV okay. bank. Yes. I, actually, I'm using LED UV. I'm using a, a spectrum of light that I can control from about 400 nanometers to a, to infra, infrared, and a 400 nan, about 400 nanometers down into the uh, UV spectrum. Thank you. Three, 250, 300 nanometers, some somewhere in there. Uh, Boy, people are messaging me like crazy, and I sorry guys, I can't respond. But uh, timer. So um, two minutes. I'm going to go three minutes start, and so that'll beep at me. So because I I forget things when I'm doing other things. Make make sure you're well hydrated. Drinks of your choice, obviously. Tony may be drinking something different than us, but it's just the time zone change. So we have a lot of wine here. <laughs> nice. Yeah, well, enjoy. So to that point, oh, here we go. This was on the outside of the negative. K uh, Cemetery Angel that's printing out right now on collodion chloride paper. K for tall Germany. Angels have a wonderful ethereal beauty that has long enticed mourners of loved ones to place to place angel statues on graves to watch over as an act of spir uh, spiritual reminder a link to the angelic realms a connection to God spirit universe life force all that is 
I don't know why I wrote that. I have no idea. I've never even read that before in my life, to my knowledge, but I guess I have. So, K for Tall, Germany, Angel. Let, let me go grab the print and we'll see where it's at. Okay, two things here. I grabbed a different contact printer. This one is split directly in the back, a little bit thinner. This is at uh, 1 minute 45 seconds, which is won't even really be close. But then I run into the problem where I can't stick my finger in there, so I need a little help to get the print pulled up. I don't want to pull it up too far because you'll crease them. So be careful doing that. Just starting to show. Let's look at the other side. So I'm probably five minutes under there. This is a pretty dense negative. You saw that negative. It's, it's pretty dense. Yeah. We're not, we don't have any sky at all. Just some trees coming in. So let me reset that timer. We're going to go for five minutes. That's kind of what I wanted to see at the two-minute mark where we were. So I'm going to go five. I'm going to cancel that and go straight up five minutes and start right now. And that baby will be printed out. So what's interesting is that while you can produce really um, – you know, let, as that's printing out, let me let me give you a little bit of insight into my. Let me give you some of my first world problems. You ready to hear them? <laughs> my first world problems go something like this. For many many years, I've been making positive images, and uh, I've had these shows. Um, I had the first major exhibition that I had was in 2006 in the States, and uh, and they were all positive images. I, I may have had one or two prints in there. I started I started doing negatives and printing in uh, probably 2003. By 2004, I was printing. I, I originally planned, started this process so I could do printing, uh, negatives and printing. This is a long way around to get here, but this is what I wanted to do. Um, and what I found over the last 10 plus years is that every time I've had an exhibition, and obviously all the plates that I really love sell, they go away, somebody buys, which is wonderful, I'm, I'm honored, that's wonderful, but I don't have those images anymore, I only have digital copies of them, so sorry about that, I only have digital copies. So there's, the impetus to do negatives and prints can be, can, can be very, you know, it's very personal of course, but can range in uh, the reasons why you do them. There can be a myriad of reasons, but let me tell you about a couple of practical ones. The practical ones are this. The next show you have, as long as you have that negative, you can make as many prints and sell as many prints as you want. You can do as many shows as you want. You can, you don't have to worry about breakage. I, don't, I could tell you horror story after horror story about shipping glass plates around the world and what happens to them when you do that, and it's not good. Um, so paper prints are cheaper, uh, less, less expensive to ship and, and, and take care of and maintain and everything else. Um, yes, they're not one-offs. They're not originals, of course. But here's the thing. If you're dealing in that collector's area, they're not going to – the value, the perceived value of the monotype or the one-off isn't as powerful – as the content and the, the context of the work that's being shown or purchased or collected. So, in other words, I found myself over the years, and that's why this newest project, Ghost Dance, that I'm working on, is all negatives and prints. I'm not, um, I can't say there won't be any positives, but, but, but the very best work is in negatives and prints, and that's what I'm doing over the winter is I'm going to spend, well, you just saw where I basically am going to be living, I'm going to be printing some um, making some prints. And, and, and so that's one practical reason. The second practical reason to do negatives is that you can 
you can take one negative and turn it into a variety of different types of art objects, different types of prints. So a collodion chloride print is going to look very different than a, a, um, a salt print that's you know waxed or an albumin print that's that's toned with selenium or uh, toned with you know, maybe a variety of toners. You, you have so many options. Once you have that negative in your hand, the world's your oyster. You can do, I mean, you can cre create as many different images aesthetically, uh, visually, you know, um, paper, toner, uh, printing out how uh, exposure, all of those things, um, all those variables will be expressed very differently on each type of paper and in each variant, uh, each type of process that you work in. So there are real strong practical reasons for working in negatives. What's what's the drawback? Well, I just I just gave you one. It's it's not the original. So if you're into the uh, if you're into that whole uh, sorry, I need to check my time here. If you're into that whole, we have 30 seconds left. Let, let sorry, I'll continue my thought. Let me grab the print. More like eight, eight minutes, maybe, huh? Let's take a look. See, this is quite a dense negative. Let's peel this top off and let you take a look at it. Oh, my little helper here to get the paper up. Boy, that is cut right to the edge, too, which is it's a good thing. I'm not complaining. Here we go. Now, now we can see the angel. Okay, let's look at the back side of it. Man, I'm gonna go another. I'm gonna go another uh, seven minutes on this. Believe it or not, twelve minutes. I won't start it yet. Take a look at this side. Looking really good there. That beautiful eggplant color, you know, really nice stuff. So let's go another seven minutes and really print it out properly. So if you're in England or Scotland or Seattle or Nova Scotia, <clears throat> doesn't matter how much sun you have, as long as you have a good UV source and the negative. You know, in the, old, in the 19th century, those old boys, would go out and make images from about March to October. Then they'd hunker down in their dark rooms and just print all winter. And that's kind of a little bit what I'm doing, but um, I'm still continuing to make images. I haven't recently on the ghost dance, but um, they that's what they would do. It'd just, just be easier for them to... Uh, print out in the winter if they had the sun, that is. And most most of the time you did, or some form of um, out, outside light, um, UV. So back to the negative portion. It's uh, uh, the, down, the downside. It's not the original. And um, you, can, you can find yourself, um, you know, you can't, and this this could happen with positives as well. But basically, the substrate, glass versus metal, that kind of thing. Negatives break. I've broken a lot of them. In fact, when they shipped my stuff over from Europe in 2011, most of my negatives were broken. I tried to put a claim in for them. They couldn't value them. It was a nightmare. I, it, it was nasty. But so really, not a whole bunch of downsides, but at the same time, a whole lot of upsides. So how I weigh this situation is that making positives, while I think they're great, they're beautiful and wonderful, they're one-off. That's a blessing and a curse. Once they're gone, they're gone. You, you, then you have the digital images or whatever you might have, and that's it, or nothing, and that's it. And you can't always make two of the exact same thing. You never can. But they're, they're original, they're one-offs, and that's, that's valuable. The negatives you have, multiple prints, multiple variants of the, variations of those prints, multiple toning options, all kinds of things you can do that you can't do with a print. Now, people often ask me, what about splitting the difference? What about walking in between um, those two areas? 
and that, that what they're really saying is, can I make bright ambrotypes that are still uh, still acceptable to look at, backed with black, and also print out on modern developing out paper? Absolutely, that's absolutely you can. What's the downside to that? The downside to that is, is you can't make any images on the pop paper. This stuff that we're working with. Wow, we only have five minutes left. I might have to show you this print next time, guys. We have we have three minutes fifty three seconds left on the printing, and then we have five minutes left on the the video feed. But let's see what happens. This cuts off at twelve. Um, I'll catch you on the flip side. I'll say my goodbyes right now. But if it doesn't cut off, we'll keep going because I'd like to show you this print. Um, so those, those are some of the ideas. So what are the challenges of air travel with wet plate chemistry? Could you comment on that? Um, yeah, that's uh, – I don't travel uh, with uh, chemistry on an airplane. I just don't. That's, it's illegal. You can't do it. What, what you need to do – and uh, let's go back to the Collodion Collective here. What you need to do is you need to establish good solid sources in the countries that you're going to be working in. And, and that's what I've done. So anywhere I go in the world – I can source um, chemistry from some I, Europe, absolutely, uh, no problem. Uh, China, hopefully after this trip, no problem. Uh, but that's I would don't take any chemicals, uh, chemistry on the plane. And boy, they get mad at you for you know looking at them wrong. N imagine if they found a bottle of collodion in your bag. To Jeannie, please tell Quinn in the small video. Oh. Yeah, sorry, Luciano. That that was me again. It's always me, isn't it? Always pilot error. I want to blame it on the technician, but or the tech, the, the the technology, but it's always the pilot crashing the plane. You're on the small screen. Yeah, I know. Sorry, um, guys. This won't be the last time we do this. <laughs> Can't see you fault. Yeah, I didn't even see these comments. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Mark, okay. Um, I am. Uh, Quinn, did you say you were making a clothing chloride print for Sally Mann earlier? I am. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send her a clothing chloride print, if it's acceptable. That's some, that, those are some big shoes to fill, <laughs> to be sending your prints off to someone like that. Can you share any – oh, sorry, I forget to select these, Barbara. Quinn, can you share any info of wet plate negative printing on regular? Yes, okay. Yes, you. Can. yeah, that's exactly a great segue. I'm glad I came upon this. Um, the the prints that i just shown you, I can, I can – oh, here's I have one right here. I won't even have to take one off the wall because I have a couple over there on the wall. Here, here's a big one. This is a 40 by 50 I made in Barcelona. This is a bright ambrotype of Chubby, um, and this is a piece of Ilford um, warm tone that's just contact printed with a bright ambrotype, and then, um, you know, develop, modern developing out paper, silver gelatin paper. This is not digital, nor was the other one that I showed you the, of, of Kylie. That light is shining, really. But it's uh, silver gelatin paper, Bright ambro type, no problem. Um, I think personally, I think there once once this idea of printing comes back into fashion, which it, it kind of is now, I think you're going to see a big surge of. And I have a lot of modern developing out paper prints here from clothing, bright ambro types. Keep in mind these are not wet clothing negatives, although they appear to be kind of negative ish. They will never print on pot paper, never print on what we're doing here. Where are we, guys? It hasn't buzzed at me, so let me see. Maybe I better do one thing at a time. Four seconds. Wow, I'm pretty intuitive. I'll be right back. Sorry. We won't have to listen to that. Let's see if we even need to go a little bit longer on this. Looks pretty good right now, but, you know, I have a little bit of light outside. Let's take a look-see. You shouldn't really expose this stuff to really 
strong light. How about that beautiful, beautiful thing right there? That is happening right there, gentlemen. And lady. Ladies and gentlemen. At least I see one lady and two gentlemen. Let's look at the other side. Because really, remember the roses on the other one? That's what we're looking at, right? Let's look at the uh, statue head here. The angel herself. Getting there. I'm going to go a little more, though. Still not quite there. I want to get that kind of bronzed over. So I'm going to go another three minutes. And just to give myself an idea. Wow, that's a 15-minute printing out process under that strong light. So that's a pretty dense negative. Start three more minutes, and it'll be printed out. At least we'll say it's printed out. I just found a couple of uh, students' prints back there. Here's a here's a clothing chloride from last week. Really nice stuff. Really looks good. And here's an albumin print. Little little over. Uh, David looks good in it though. But glass looks beautiful. Albumin prints are just like guys, printing out, I, I so want to see more people doing this and learning how to do it because it's so rewarding and interesting. Hey, there's Noah. <laughs> um, you get, like I said, the, the huge advantages you, you get from this is uh, the ability to make multiple prints and multiple variations uh, aesthetically, if you will, in those prints. But Barbara, I highly encourage you to, to investigate making overexposed or a little bright ambrotypes and printing them on modern developing out paper. It works wonderful. You might have to use a three or four contrast filter, but they, they work lovely. They are, and they're beautiful. They're wonderful. Um, Tony, yeah, sorry about that, guys, on the, the screen. Let's see. I just made plates in 38 degree Fahrenheit weather last week, no problem. There you go, yeah, except my hand's getting cold. It's wet here in cold Mississippi. I use a canvas cooler around my silver bath. Yeah, good. That's good. What Yufus just put up there on the the Q and A or what when he where whenever he put it up. That's that's a good uh, example of that. And I've done that a lot too. I, the older I get, the less interested I am in going out in the cold, but I certainly do it. Um, someone tell Quinn that we can only see him postage stamp size. God, I wish I was postage stamp size, Mark. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys, we missed this. Jeannie came down and got this. So, uh, Lancaster, PA. Good, 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 good. And let's see if we can get through these real quick. Those are just telling me we're here. So next time we do this. So if we get cut. Oh, we didn't get cut off. Okay. Good. And next time we do this, I swear you let me know you want in on the video, and I'll get you. You'll be in before I am. I'll make sure you get a. Um, uh, link, I guess I have to invite you in. I thought people, I said public, I thought people could just come in and join us, but um, we probably have a minute or so. Ooh, 16 seconds left. Perfect. Okay, Tim asks, how do you thin clothing chloride after a few prints are poured? Is my understanding it thickens up over time? I assume you're th are thinning with ether. Yes, you can do that. Um, okay. Let me go get that, and we'll, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to Tim's question about thinning floating chloride. Pretty bright sky. I'm just going to take it out and let you guys see this right now because I don't want to get cut off and... I want to make sure you guys can see this real quick. Quite lovely. Quinn, when you mount that in the frame, can you uh, dry mount it with heat or would you hinge mount it? Absolutely dry mount it, yeah. Thank you. One of the things about this is um, the flatter uh, you can get the, these prints, the better they look. Clodium chloride's no problem. Albumin gets so wrinkly and, well, 
wrinkly and crinkly and thin. This stuff absolutely needs to be dry mounted. This is a little thicker, not so bad. Um, let me go throw this in the wash pan real quick, guys. <clears throat> Looks wonderful, guys. It's got to wash a little bit, but really nice. So I don't know what we accomplished here, but I'm going to let you guys get in and ask some questions, um, and we'll, we'll go with Tim's question here. I'm just going to beeline on some questions here. Um, it, it does thicken up over time, but you know what? Um, my recommendation, when you make collodion chloride emulsion, have enough burrito paper prepared to um, simply coat all the paper that you that you need. Um, I, I make I make it between 250 milliliters to 500 milliliters at a time I'm doing the size of paper I'm doing and, and how many I'm doing. But I like to make it batch sp specific for each run. You get better results. Um, aged clothing chloride, yeah it'll go a few months but but Anything that that begins to oxidize or is exposed to the environment degrades. I mean, straight up, and that's nothing without different about that either. Um, we did a little test last week when I made a batch of emulsion. Uh, somebody in the course said, uh, "How long do you have to wait before we use that now?" And I said, "Well, typically I like to let it sit for a day, let everything settle out, settle out." I showed him how to inject the silver nitrate into the magnetic stir into the emulsion properly and uh, but sometimes you can still get little you know it's always throwing down per precipitate so it's always throwing down so I said um, I usually like to let it sit for a day and somebody said well can can we use it right now Should, can we try to use it right now and I thought wow yeah let's do it so we poured some paper hung it up just like we just did there five ten minutes it was a little warmer it dried quickly and uh, ran a print off. In fact, I think this was the print we ran. I think that was from collodion chloride that was made 20 minutes prior to making this image. So, <clears throat> some of these old wives' tales, you might want to investigate and move beyond. That one was, I was just sticking by the quote rules let it sit for a day and settle and then pour your paper. You don't need to. At least that batch I didn't need to. So, so. Um, you can use ether, but Tim, I, I'd, I'd caution you on that. I'd, I'd, I'd find a different work methodology or workflow methodology to do that with. If you're having it, if you're keeping it that long, too. Uh, okay, uh, okay. I, I'm missing something on my screen. Cannot see your request. Can you figure it out later? Okay. Yeah. No problem. Um, what is a canvas cooler? Uh, I believe a canvas cooler is a cooler that you can wrap around something, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure, though. What kind of washing times are you looking at to get that coating off of the paper? Um, you know, that's a really good question. Depending on the temperature of the water, I've noticed that the warmer the water is, the more, the more it will remove that anti-curling uh, chemical or, or compound. I don't know what it is. But what I actually do is I actually mechanically, physically rub it off the back and cleanse, change the water out. I've got running water in there, but change the water out and make sure the front, don't let that stuff dry in the front of the image. It's almost, looks like fog and it's almost impossible to get off. That's why the ADOX paper doesn't work. The ADOX paper has something in the emulsion or in the burrito paper that reacts and it looks like a blue fog. Um, Bruce Schultz, who was in the workshop, he's from Louisiana, he was here last week, 
he brought some ADOX paper up and he saw my YouTube video saying that it was it didn't work. He said, I've had pretty good luck with it in these other areas. Maybe you could use it, you know, and said, yeah, bring some along. And uh, we tried it and it was terrible. It didn't work at all. It, it worked, but it was blue and yeah, it, was, it wasn't good. So washing time, uh, um, you know, 30, 40 minutes for a real print, but, but make sure you mechanically or physically get that stuff off of there. It's not as bad as I'm making out to be, but um, it's bad enough um, to, to be concerned with it, not, not let it sit on your print, especially if it's serious work. So, Tim, I sent you a, a request. I, if you're out there, sorry about that. I hope you can. Um, why keep the mixed collodion chloride in, a, in cooler? Great question. Um, for one thing, I run white lights in my darkroom as well, too. So any white light on, you know, keep in mind, collodion chloride is this. It's collodion, I, I won't, well, I'll list all the ingredients. It's collodion is the carrier. The salt is strontium chloride. There's citric acid as the restrainer. Or uh, maybe it's glacial. I can't remember. Um, and, and there's... Uh, there's glycerin. Uh, glycerin acts as a plasticizer, basically. Uh, <clears throat> and in that silver or in that collodion, you spray a concentrated solution of silver nitrate in, in it. So what you have in the collodion chloride is emulsion, basically. It's it's film emulsion, if you want to call it that, meaning that it's self-contained. It's not pouring collodion on a plate and then sensitizing it in a silver bath. Everything's right there. That's why you make it just like you saw we just did now. And these prints, put a negative on it, get to some light energy outside, UV, whatever, it'll print out. It's already in there. The, the, the light sensitive, the silver nitrate is already in there. The silver chloride, if you will. So if you don't keep it in a cooler and you don't have it in a black bottle or if you don't have it protected from the light, and I just don't mean an amber bottle, this has to be a blackout bottle. Or in this case, since I already had a previous batch of collodion chloride in the big black wine bottle you saw in my cooler, we grabbed another whiskey bottle, a clear one. I didn't have time to black it out. We just made it in there and kept it in the cooler, and that's what I was just pouring that paper with in there. So why you have to keep the mixed collodion chloride in the cooler in that particular case is the light. Um, and also, too, although it's cool down here, you know, I'm only running maybe 16, 17 degrees, 18 degrees at tops in there, Celsius, 65 to, 60 to 65, 68 degrees tops um, Fahrenheit in there. Um, you also want to keep that collodion chloride cool. It's, it'll be sensitive to heat. So if you're, if you're in the summertime, your, your dark room's really warm, you want to make sure you keep that um, in a cooler or some, you don't need to refrigerate it, but, but just like collodion, you know, same thing. It, it is collodion. So hope that answered that question. Uh, Tim's got me going, man. This is awesome. I hope you're out there, Tim. I hope you're watching at least. I, I've lost my stats on how many people are watching and all this stuff, so I'm not really sure now. Um, where do you store the poured paper after they dry on the line, and for how long will you store them? Wonderful questions, Tim. Awesome. Um, I, as you saw, I, I cut, you know, I fold it up in the little boat, flow it, let it snot off, pick that off, hang it up, it dries, you know, it's cool in there today, so it took about five, eight minutes to, to dry, maybe ten minutes. After that, if I wasn't printing out on it straight away, which I usually am, paper safe boxes in. I've got four or five paper safe boxes in there. So if you came to a workshop in my studio here, uh, negative and printing out, and you can and we'll get, I hope we get some, uh, some people that have been here and taken my negative and printing out course. You'll get a paper safe box and you'll put all your salt, your albumin, your clothing chloride in there. So that way on the third day you've got your negatives. All you do is you just print out all day. So you just pull them from the paper safe, put them, boom, print them out, et cetera, et cetera. How long? You know, I've had paper for, I, I don't want to say over 60 days. And, and depending on the temperature and humidity and things, it affects the emulsion. Um, your safest bet is a couple of weeks, but I wouldn't want to tell you that you couldn't go three or four months. Um, you, you, you'll get away with that with the collodion chloride emulsion, but the paper, I, w I wouldn't store it. I, I would say use it in a couple of weeks, actually. I want to be safe and say use it up in a couple of weeks. So if you're not going to print out, 
in the next two weeks and you just poured a bunch of paper, you might want to cons reconsider that the next time or, or plan out. Collodion is all about planning. Everybody knows this, right? How much ether you have, how much Collodion is your developer, this, that, or whatever. Uh, where did you... Oh, here's uh, Corey ask. Uh, learn and or study about photochemistry. I have a Bachelor of Integrated Studies degree in um, uh, communication and visual art. And I have ah oh, Tony, look at that guy. What's his What's his name? Her name? It's a Rocky. Rocky, hello. We love animals. <laughs> How cute! <laughs> yeah, go for it. Rocky's punching. Um, I I have an undergraduate degree in photography, mm. uh, communication, and visual art, and I have an MFA or Master of Fine Arts. And I concentrated my energy uh, in my graduate studies on. Um, organic chemistry and photography and historic processes. So I had to, while I'm not a chemist by any stretch of the imagination, just like most photographers 160 years ago and today, you have to uh, learn about chemistry to some degree. I love chemistry. I wish I would have pursued it more uh, when I was younger, but um, basically learning through experimentation and there's just some facts you have to have. You have to understand some basic chemistry. I think you have to understand some basic chemistry to work in this process. And if you don't, you'll spend a lot of money and you won't be very productive in it. So um, I take a course, a basic course on org organic chemistry. I take a course on um, um, anything, you know, any of the, it's, that's the thing. Today you can't really do that. Um, you can't really go uh, take film courses anymore at universities, I don't think. Uh, I'm still here. Good, Tim, I'm glad. I, I wish you could come in. Hi, Quinn, what scanner are you using to scan your... Oh, great, Phil. This is a good... One. Oh, Phil, that's Phil. I have PC. I didn't know that was Phil. Okay, Phil, Phil Chin in, in Vancouver. I hope you're still out there. Hi, Quinn, what scanner are you using to scan your plates? Do you have a special adapter for it? Are you putting the plate flat on the glass. Thanks, Phil. This is a great question. I'm going to show you what I use, and it's not a scanner. <clears throat> Woo! Bright light. I use these. These are little 160 Studio Max with umbrellas and uh, that digital camera. That's all I use that for. I What I do is I set up a black cloth um, behind me and I put the plate up, put, put, put the model lights on, F32, F64, whatever you have, lowest ISO setting, shoot it as a raw file if you can, boom. That's the best way to, to uh, copy your plates. I don't recommend scanning unless you love to be in Photoshop all day. I don't recommend it. There's all my daguerreotype stuff. Um, it's all bo it's still boxed up. My fuming hoods and my fuming hoods, my mercury pot, all my gear, my PID, all that stuff. My dark box. You've seen my dark box, though. Quinn, Quinn, you just with the uh, the copy negatives. You're just setting that up like the old copy stand, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly the verbiage I use, Dale. Okay. Think of it as the old 45 degree copy stand lighting. That's yeah. the best thing you can do. And if you have one, even better. I have yeah, to tell with this. Giving away our ages now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I actually I kind of wear that with a badge of honor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, I've had so many young folks in my dark room. I'll bring them all in the dark room and I'll say, raise your hand if this is the first time you've ever been in a dark room. And boop, 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 You know, just it's, it's amazing to me. It's beautiful because I get to turn them on to something they've never seen but it's frightening and scary on the other hand. So um, I think part of my life's mission is to um, try to introduce the average person to these processes and, and allow them to work in them, you know, without... When you're copying negatives, do you hang... Uh, do you copy them as negatives or do you hang velvet in the back because it absorbs the uh, light and you don't get bounce or reflection? Yes. Um, in, in fact, uh, good question. You mean copying the plates, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I have these little... I guess I don't have any right in front of me. I have these little stands that I put the plate on. I'll show you one here. 
I have these little stands, and depending on how big the plate is, but these little stands that that I'll just set the plate up on and black out behind me, behind the camera, because you're going to get all kinds of reflections. See that? You're going to get all kinds of reflections on the plate. So you need to you need to black out behind you and then focus with the modeling lights and then copy the plate. And like the these are all ink jets from um, copied images that way. And they work beautiful. I mean, they, they work great. Scanning, man. Photoshop scanning uh, on a flatbed, and then you, it, the color balance is always screwed up. Um, and then you spend forever cleaning up these little specks. And if you do prints like large, like 40 by 30 by 40 inch prints, every little speck, I mean, the artifacts are okay if you want them, but um, every speck's a dot. Uh, so you have a bigger chance of destroying the image by putting something on the emulsion side of the surface. If you scan them through the glass, if they're clear glass, it looks funky. So I highly recommend. Most everyone has a digital camera. Buy you a little little strobe kit if you're serious about copying your work. Or you know, I have a whole catalog, a whole database of my work, so I have to have really good high res copies of them. Okay, um, so here's Mark. Mark, I hope you're still out there, buddy. I, I thought I tried to send you an invite. Um, but I don't know if I'm getting through. I gotta, I gotta learn how to do this, guys. And I appreciate you bearing with me here. I still teach. This is Mark, uh, Mark Zimmerman. Um, I've, I've been in touch with Mark for how many years, Mark? A few, anyway. Um, I still teach traditional film photography. Awesome. It's great to see these 20-year-olds experience it for the first time. Most of them love it. Yeah, good for you. Um, and keep keep their enthusiasm going. I think I think we're on the precipice of of losing and and maybe have lost a lot um, already. But there's some of us kind of coming back together and trying to uh, join up together and and make this accessible and interesting and 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 practical for people to do. Not not a fad or not something to jump on, but but something that's that's engaging and interesting that that holds their attention and it gives them. Really, at the end of the day, what you're looking to do is is allow them to understand that it's a new way for them to express themselves. If you if you couch it properly, and you look at it, because this stuff scares people. This is too much work. This is too much commitment. This is too much. You know, I can just go like this with my camera and go into Photoshop and do whatever I want. But if you show them, if you educate them on the value of this work, the value of doing um, something like this and then show them how they can apply it to their own interests or their own objectives, um, it's, it's a wonderful thing and it can happen. Um, Tim, Tim again, any advice on, on practically how to inject the silver into the magnetic mixer with the clothing chloride mix? That's a, that's a great question. That's, that's one of those advanced questions that I only get usually at workshops. Yes, I do actually. Um, the best way to do that, so for those of you that don't know how this, this is set up, I'll just explain real quickly. You have this mixture of collodion. Oh, low battery. Yeah, I guess I better plug in. You have this mixture of, uh, God, if I can get it. You have this mixture of collodion, um, strontium chloride, glycerin, alcohol, and usually, you know, 250 mil. Let's say you use the recipe, 250 mil. You have that in a glass beaker. You put it on a magnetic stirrer. My magnetic magnetic stirrer is on the dry side over here in my dark room. Put a put a spinner in it. Um, yeah, uh, magnetic spinner. I, can't, I forget the technical term for it right now. Little white plastic spinner goes down in. You turn the magnetic stirrer on and it just whips that stuff up. And so you get your emulsion spinning around. What I normally do is I normally let it spin for 30 seconds to a minute before I have, um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I think I have about 28 mils, 28 mils in a hypodermic, plastic hypodermic syringe with no, you can have the needle on it if you want, but uh, th uh, th about 28 mils in a hypodermic needle, that's spinning on the 10 revel uh, number 10 on the on the setting, the highest setting on my stirrer I have. And every after one minute, I, I push in three uh, 10 mils at a time. 
and let that spin for 30 seconds. I push 10 mils, let it spin for 30 seconds, and I push the last 10 mils in. That allows the, um, that allows the silver, um, this, uh, basically the silver chloride in, in so many words, uh, well, silver nitrate to penetrate the collodion and create the emulsion, right? If you don't do that right, um, I think you're going to see um, a lot of little specks of precipitated silver chloride on the prints. It's a problem. So um, uh, we we can actually, on one of these broadcasts, I will actually make some clothing. If we do a broadcast and I say the first hour is dedicated to making clothing chloride emulsion, we'll walk you through the whole process and you'll see exactly how I do it. So I hope that helps in the interim though, Tim. Um, let's go to the next one here. Ha, I don't have a camera on my laptop, Robert Beach. Okay, that's okay. Um, uh, John Slade, I'm looking at Jeannie. You are not full frame. Okay, sorry. Again, yeah, I uh, don't know how I missed that. Guys, one thing about me, when I get focused in on something, not much else can come in. So I'm pretty, uh, pretty focused on what I'm doing usually. So I'm not ignoring you, but I just didn't catch this in the feed. John Slade, I have sourced black glass from a local supplier. It is dimpled. Is that normal and okay for BG black glass amber types? Yes, John, and I'm glad you mentioned that. For years and years and years, I've been buying black glass. I've had it shipped, had it shipped all those years to Europe, um, and I never looked into where it was made or how it was made. All I knew that it was nice. I've got a bunch over here right now. I knew, I, all I knew was nice, thick black glass, pure, pure black, really good stuff. One of my favorite, not one of it, my favorite positive substrate without a doubt. And then I got looking into it. And I found out how this stuff is made. And it really intrigued me. And, and I found out where all this black glass was coming from. And guess where all this black glass, I'll tell you where it was coming from first, and then I'll tell you how it's made and why you see those nipples. Where it was coming from was Denver, Colorado, right over on Pecos Street right here. So now I can go right over to the source and pick it up. All I have to do is make a call, and, and I go over and get it. But back to your question. Um, the dimples and and actually you, you sometimes yeah you'll see divots and almost humps and rolls in the glass that is because it, and, and the cost of it it's not only the material but the manufacturing this is basically handmade yes it's rolled out but it's not rolled out like clear glass or window pane glass in these massive ways this is made for stained glass production so it's a very imperfect very uh, um, hand of man ish if you will right and I just loved, when I found that out, I just loved that idea that now the glass that I'm working is, with is imperfect and everything else in the process is imperfect and the photographs that I'm making of the people are imperfect and the people are imperfect and I'm imperfect. It seemed like a beautiful match and it looked really wonderful. So embrace those dimples and crinkles and everything else in the glass unless you're getting those divots where the developer hangs and you get a hot spot or something. You know, Pick the, pick the side. Let the let the dimples go on the back. Pick the smooth side or the rippled side, and those dimp leave those dimples on the back side. You still have the beauty of a handmade object and not a mass-produced object. I think it looks that way, um, and and it'll work better. But that's completely normal, John. And collodion, as I say, hides a multitude of sins. So don't worry about it if they're not too extreme. Um, uh, Tim says, Quinn, can you share your thoughts about creating collodion chloride pot prints? Um, Wow, and you can't find anything, John. You can't find anything. Did you? Um, uh, do, do you mean? Do you mean, uh, Tim? My thoughts about creating them. In in what context is it? Uh, um, I'm not really sure what that means. Uh, share your thoughts about creating. Uh, my thoughts about creating chloride pot prints. Uh, okay, I'll tell you a couple of things. If I'm misreading your question, you can ask it again or correct me. Collodion uh, uh, chloride prints are also known as aristotype prints. The aristotype company in uh, New York. Uh, this this process or this uh, this printing out paper was invented by a man named Simpson in 1864. It is the most archival pot paper of the 19th century. In fact, if you find 
if you find some of these guys lay, lying around today in, in old shops and, and flea markets and stuff, they might look just like that. They might look just like they were made yesterday. You're not going to find that with albumin prints, and you're not going to find that with salt prints. Those are going to be, even in the best care, they're going to be yellowed and aged and everything else. So my thoughts about that, you're going to see uh, the Ghost Dance project printed on collodion chloride, printed out on collodion chloride, let's say. Um, I love it. it. It has all the qualities. It has all the aesthetics. It has the everything I'm looking for in a paper. It's got, it's got, it's got the finish that I want. It's got everything. So, having said that, if that's a, um, if that's if that's what you're asking, that's 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 how that's how I feel about it. Now, the practical that's a practical standpoint from the, or some of the creative too. But from the from the more conceptual standpoint, I love the idea that I'm still using collodion. It's almost like making um, ambrotypes again in a, in a weird way, but um, I'm still using collodion. That's part of the process. It's still very valid for the 19th century. It wasn't used much, which, which I really think it's, it's great. Um, but that's, those are, I love collodion chloride, uh, aristotypes. Um, it definitely ranks very high. It's one of my favorites, for sure, or, or, or my favorite, actually. Well, I appreciate it, Tim. Quinn, the information you are sharing is very valuable. Just the things I learned today is going to save me a lot of time. Also, how can we support you? Hey, you know what? You support me by being here. Um, I do like to pitch my books. I, I try to try to sell my books and my videos and all that. And I, I'd like to give something back to the community. So, but I, I'm not finding the time to do these on a regular basis. So that's why I'm here today. And I hope this continues. I appreciate that, though, Tim. You're a kind gentleman. I can't find anything. Um, well, you know what? I just, John, I just sent you a link. See, see if you can get in with that. Um, also, I, there's a plug-in you have to have. I oh, I, I, I guess I had that. I don't know. He's gone again. But if you look it up in the apps or uh, uh, look it up online, you can find the, the Google Hangouts plug-in. Okay, cool. Thank you, Jeannie. Hello, Edison from New York. Uh, welcome. Um, I know I've gone way over time, but uh, not really way over time, but I'm going to finish this stuff. And Jeannie, hi everybody. Okay, cool. So I am so OCD, all the right column on my computer <laughs> is cleaned up now. I can go in and grab that print. So I'll be right back. If somebody comes in or questions, can you guys handle them for just a second? I'm going to finish this print off. <laughs> Where are you, Jeannie? I am upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, I shouldn't have made the connection. <laughs> That's funny. Where are you? <laughs> I'm I'm downstairs from my family. So. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm in Nova Scotia. Oh, okay. How About is it cold? Yeah, not not quite as bad as you guys are having, but we. Yeah, got we got to, Arctic thing dipped down, and it yeah. What you guys said, what you guys said was two, three days ago. I guess it was. We're getting today. Oh, okay. Uh, just outside the city, I think they got about thirty centimeters of snow. What, wow, 30, these, these thirty cent. What's that? Eight, eighteen, thirty cent, eighteen inches, something like that. Oh wow! Yeah, we didn't get a lot of snow, but the negative degrees is not fun. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't. It was It wasn't near as cold here. Yeah. Uh, but I'm right on the Atlantic coast as opposed to the Rockies, so there really lies the difference. That's nice. Yeah, we'd like to visit Canada someday. Uh, sure. I think we're trying to work on that, actually. Oh, awesome. <laughs> cool. And, and Tony, you're on the other side of the puddle? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm in the south of France. So uh, we have nice, hot, sunny days still. Nice. Oh, south of France, meaning Marseille, Toulon, that area? Uh, no, near Montpellier. Okay. South of Marseille. So, yeah, it's very civilized here. I mean, I'm English, obviously, or from England originally. Mm -hmm. Oh, I so, thought that was a French accent. Oh, no, that's an English accent. How many years you guys don't quit? A lot of years? Hey, John. Hey. Hey, buddy. John made it. All right. Good deal. I've just got, I got to make up a little bit of... Uh, fix here. So I'm going to do a, a liter of, uh, I just ran out in there, so I just used that last little bit on that last print. A 
just for print fix. Um, so I'm going to do um, 100 grams in one liter. I've got an RO water system here because I'm tired of buying distilled water, so I got an RO system put in and uh, reverse osmosis. And so my water is down to about, uh, I've seen it as low as six parts per million as I test it with a PPM meter. So it's quite, it's quite low. Uh, 119 grams. How about that? How about a 12 percent? Hey, John. Hello. Hello. Hi, John. We're we're getting here. We're gonna we're gonna make this thing work, man. We're gonna do this thing. John was in a positive course. How long ago was that? That was a while ago. That was January 2013. Wow. There, so I just used that last one. A 10 percent, just for print fix. Um, so I'm going to do. Uh, I like to do twice in technology. I'm going to mute you, John. You come back in when you. That's just me coming back through your system there. Um, so John's been John's been in a couple of years now. Uh, he's doing some really nice stuff uh, on the positive side. Um, I'm going to go uh, throw some uh, RO water in that. Shake it up. Um, I'm having some technical difficulties. Wow, that's right. Just use that last one. I all have been. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So I just saw that, Jeannie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a cute little kitty. <laughs> Oh yes, uh, Tim. Yes, it, it's uh, this. Tim just asked, uh, "Is this video going? Uh, is this video cast going to be viewed later?" Yes, this will go up on YouTube um, uh, right after I, I stop the broadcast. Actually, um, so. <laughs> sorry. So Jeannie will be all over the world with that cat mask on. <laughs> Whatever it is, I can't tell what it is. Uh, uh, Barbara says, thanks for answering the enlarger use for plates. Thought that would be a good way to share images with others who might have been the model. Yes, a very good way. Um, also, Quinn, should I keep the wet plate chemistry in the cooler? Temps are warmer than, say, 80s. Yes, definitely, Barbara. In fact, I say if temperatures are over about 75 degrees, you should probably consider uh, using a cooler. I, I just... I use a cooler all the time, regardless, cold and hot. Um, so, yeah, I use them constantly. All of our, uh, we have a couple of little shards of sodium thiosulfate there, but it's pretty much dissolved. I will go pour this into the uh, tray and fix that print we just made. I wanted to pitch out, do a little shout out here to uh, W.E. Fain and Sons. Let me put my glasses on and see if I'm reading that right, because I don't want to screw his name up. W yeah W E Fain and Sons manufacturers of clothing daguerreotype cases uh, W E Fain and Sons dot com call Bill um, th those right there and then look he sent what he sent me uh, is this beautiful little case uh, with an inset it's not exactly a union case but it's it's pretty close it's not quite puffy enough here and um, Bruce Schultz pointed a couple of things out last last week when I showed them, but they're nice. They're they're made in the USA. They're nice little cases. I I really would love to. Uh, some of my best sellers, and probably the size too. But I sold a lot of work in Paris, and I took a, I don't know how many I had of these. Jeannie might know, but I probably had five or ten of these, maybe six or eight of these, maybe with ambrotypes in them. First things to sell. Right before the show even opened, they were gone. Um, 
they're just they, they these little presentations. Somebody was asking. Oh, Phil Philip Chin was asking me about presentation or, or on Facebook. Presentation is huge. Sometimes you just want to show the work for the work, and sometimes if you if you dress it up like this, if it's appropriate, you know, and you have to be the judge on that. It transforms the photograph from a, a photograph into a, a piece of art or a piece of uh, work. You know, it, it, it you know, you, now, not only do you have the object of the photograph, which people are still thinking of it as a photograph, you put it in this. Now you just transcended that idea of just a photograph to this piece of art. This, 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 this tangible, you know, and that's the thing. We have kind of disconnected ourselves from that, right? We don't really hold things anymore. We don't, we don't hold plates or we don't have, you know, they're not tangible, they're zeros and ones and nothing wrong with that necessarily, but it may, may not fit into your scope or vision of what photography is or should be. There we are, we're all cleaned up guys, I'll be right back, um, I'll, the, I'm going to set a, a, a fixed time for five minutes on this. So how's it going today, John? It's going well, Gene. Yourself? Good, good. Yeah, I had a problem there for a minute. Once I got the invite, I had both. I had two windows open at the same time, or whatever it was, and there was some yeah. problems. But I'm I'm good now. Good. And I forget where you're at. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri, right, yeah. Yes. It's cold there, too? Yes. It's cold all over. <laughs> so you guys, you guys moved, huh? Yeah, yeah, we moved. We're uh, out here kind of east of Denver now, out, kind of out in the sticks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's good. It's a nice house, and... And yeah, we have a lot of um, good neighbors, and good land around us, so that it's not too crowded. You know, it's nice. Sure. So, are you a blues fan, John? Um, I, I'm not much of a sports fan at all, but um, you, you know, I'll, I know I know the sport. You know, I know the game, uh, so I can watch it, but. Uh, not a big fan. Boy, I can't find any hockey fans down in the states for some reason. <laughs> oh, there's there's a lot of them here. <laughs> Every, everybody around me here is all growing their beards out or whatever it is. For oh the, yeah. <laughs> for the playoffs? You're that positive? Goodness. I I, I don't know. They, they you know they uh, seems to every time hockey comes around they all start growing beards for a couple months or something. It has nothing to do with the cold. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, Al McGinn's played in your town for quite a while, and his home's not far from here, where I am. Where's that? Nova Scotia. Oh. And, of course, we just ex ex exported our best hockey player uh, in the last few years to Colorado and Nathan McKinnon. Hmm. He's only 19 years old. Oh, eight. I think he's still 18. He might be 19, but he's making around three or four million dollars a year. Oh wow! <laughs> not not a bad way to live, eh? <laughs> and where exactly were you at, Tony? Oh, sorry, I was uh, got two screens open. Uh, I live uh, south of France, it's near Montpellier. South of France, okay. Go to Paris, keep going south until you hit the Mediterranean, and that's us. It's, it's pleasant. Okay. We have a lot of good sunshine, which I like. Nice. Yes. We, we traveled a lot around there. We love it. We love France. Oh, 
Well, I got three more minutes on that wash. We'll wash it out, uh, fix it, and t or fixing and toning, and, and we'll let you take a look at it. So it looks like it could probably gone. That was a uh, a 17 minute um, printing out. I could have probably gone 25 minutes, but we'll see. We'll we'll look at it here in a second. Um, so what kind of burning questions do we have as we wait for that print? We'll take a look at that, and then we'll kind of we'll kind of wrap it up and see where we're at. Um, I don't want to go. I, I didn't even know how this was going to go, so I I don't know that I even expected anything. Uh, Ten minutes. Ten minutes? No, no, no I've just been called for supper. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, yeah, and that's about where we'll be too. Ten minutes. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, you're you're right. You're uh, what are you? Uh, eight at uh, twenty hundred? Eight o'clock? Yeah, twenty forty four. Nice. Yeah. Quinn, this is so great. You're willing to share your knowledge of this process. I have learned so much from you in the past two years. Well, thank you, Terry. I, I hope you're in, and I hope you're watching. Uh, you've been you've been doing some really good things. I wish I could comment on everything. People ask me, why don't you comment on much of any? And you know what, guys? It's really if I comment on something, and then the questions start coming, and it comes back. Um, my camera's out of focus. Quinn, your camera's out of focus. Which That's a Mac. it's a Mac. Try that. How about that? Any better? Philip, <laughs> um, uh, why I don't comment much on on the stuff, guys, is because then I and then I start getting pinged and then I can't respond and I, I and it's not that I'm not watching or that I don't care. It's just it's a time thing for me. Um, this is really rare for me to have time like this, so I'm I'm ha I want to do this. I'm happy to do it. I just need to find that time to do it. And and with this kind of support and and this will only get better. And like I said earlier. These will go up online, and if people want to watch it, and they can get something out of it. I don't know if they're going to watch a three-hour presentation, but or a three-hour chat. But who knows? They might. They can scrub through it and find what they like. Um, Philip, I don't know um, what, but Terry, you're doing some wonderful things. I'm keeping my eye on you, and and let me know how I can help you. You know, if you're any of the issues you're having or whatever you might have, let me know. I'm happy to help if I can. Quinn, your camera's out of focus. I don't. I don't know. Am I out of focus? Your camera's fine. Okay. It's okay. I'm here. Okay. Yeah. So Terry's in with us. Good. Yeah. I don't know who's in. So unless you say something over here in the chat, I don't know if you're watching or if you're in or whatever. But please welcome if you are. Uh, we've been doing some clothing chloride. Maybe next time we'll do some uh, um, some albumin. Uh, we've been looking at some different prints. And what else have we done? We just kind of chatted about pa varieties of papers and different. That's my buzzer. Be right back. So when are you next back in France? What? When are you, when are you coming to France again? Oh, <laughs> we don't have any plans that I know of. Right oh, now, it's you have to make some plans. on the books. <laughs> just China. Well, that's the other way. That'll be enough for us this year, I think. <laughs> that's going to be really exciting, though. Whereabouts in China? Um, Shanghai and, and Hangzhou. Hangzhou? Hangzhou. Hangzhou, yeah. Yeah, I have never been, but uh, it's, oh. certainly, it's yeah. certainly up there. <laughs> Yeah, it's it takes an act of Congress to get over there. You know, there's really? all special visas you have to get and everything. <laughs> um, I'll I'll suggest don't ship anything by FedEx and uh, and uh, expect no problems on arrival. Um, I was there for two months in 2001. Oh. And uh, I shipped 400 rolls of film by FedEx to Beijing, and it took 12 days to get it out of customs. Um, so. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was pretty tough. They saw me as an importer, and yeah. of course, and of course, my visa said tourist. So, so it created all kinds of challenges. You, you'll love it there, though. Oh yeah, we're we're really excited. I guess it's in about a week or two. We we leave the twenty fourth. Yeah, about two weeks. And the twenty third. Yeah. Yeah, not quite long enough on this one, guys. But you know what? This is a great example. 
of showing you what um, what exposure might look like. See, I'm just still way too blown out at the top. I dried it down with a hair dryer in there a little bit. Is that sharper back here? I don't it, know. It's it is hard to see the images, but it is. It is. Am I, am I big? You're big. Okay. But yeah, it gets fuzzy. The closer you get, the more fuzzy it gets. How about here? Uh, but the, and then the light, yeah, it's all blown out. Is it? Sorry. Okay. Well, there you go. Right there. Well, yeah, it's just not it, sharp enough. Yeah. True. It, the cam. Yeah. I. You know what? I'm going to look for a different methodology to do this with. But, but see here, guys. No, no chance of overprinting this at at, at uh, 17 minutes under the UV. But look at the paper. I mean, at least you can see the paper, right? I hope you can. Yes. Got a nice tone to it, but you're right. It is not the same color as it is. You know what? What do, I'm going to unplug and try to get it in some natural light over here by the window. This is nice diffused light. That's even worse. Um, yeah, we might have to practice with yeah, that. Yeah, we will. We'll have to practice. Oh, how about here? Any better? No. Shoot. Just, you can't. Well, if you can't see prints... What is it? It's glossy. It's glossy. It's gloss. <laughs> Here, let me try this, guys. I sorry for experimenting, but we want to figure this out. This is a pretty dense negative. This might be better. I'm seeing it quite well on my monitor. I don't know. It's not the right color, but... Huh. Well, I tried. Is that any better? No. Closer was better. Right about there-ish. Yeah. Uh, closer. <laughs> That's good. Right in there, yeah. yeah. I, think well, what's, I think what's happening, Quinn, is you're showing the reflective light and you're getting blurry. Yeah. I think that's it, too. Is it any better there? We got to go back to that uh, forty, that old copy stand, and cross polarize the light. Oh, there you go. Yeah. maybe there. Uh, there you go. That's you can see the tonal range there better now. But yeah, uh, that's that's what I kind of want you to get. Hey, Ufus. Hey, there he is. So, hey, buddy. Hey, Ufus. That'll that'll give you an idea. But this hey. paper, this paper is wonderful. Um. And unfortunately, we will figure this out, guys, because if I can get an external camera, actually, that color tone is looking even better now that it's drying down. Um, but again, uh, I apologize, but i got to reach over here. Again, coming from that kind of density, right? Can you see that? I hope maybe this way. Well, that shows fine. Yeah, okay. So that's the kind of density we're talking about. Uh, making a print that way gives you some idea, but the the biggest thing people don't understand is how dense these things need to be to to print out on traditional pop paper, right? So it looks perfect to me. Oh, good. Oh, good. Thank you, Terry. Um, um, let's see. Camera looks perfect. Oh, good. Okay. Here we go. Um, and that's what I'm I'm using as well too. Terry's a MacBook Pro. I love my MacBooks. Oh wait, I just deleted. Tim, can you put your question up again? I, I was my OCD kicked in and I deleted everything off that side of the list. <laughs> I'm a little darker on this side. I need some fill light, but I cut it off so we can hopefully see the print. Terry could see it. Mine, mine, mine looks okay here. It's not the right color, but oh yeah, it's, uh -huh. it's still it's still wet too, guys. I mean that's why it's so flimsy. But you can see I'm about I'm about a half a stop under still, yeah. So I'm about five minutes under that particular lighting situation. But that should, that gives you some idea. You know, we'll we'll get into this further. Um, Ufus has been in my workshop on negatives and prints. Um, John's been in my positive. 
and how I how I tend to work is is experiential, like hands on. You you want to go through and you want to see what you know fail, succeed, fail, succeed. And this paper to me is a lot like um, aluminum, a lot like using aluminum for n making negatives and prints. This this paper because you can make the emulsion and you can easily pour the paper. I mean that's that's just the mechanical thing and hang it up and dry. And if you make the negative, this stuff will give you this. This reminds me, which it is. This reminds me of the old Chicago albumin, right? Where you had the ability to quickly print something out and see what it looked like. But this takes it one step further, and this is a final archive archival print. I mean, I could I could go wash that, and it'll dry down a little bit darker. It, it won't look so bad, but I could I could go wash that frame it, mat it, and frame it up, and no problem, no problem at all. But making negatives, think about what we started with is the, the density, oh, here we go, Tim, Tim just asked a question again. Think about the density and the contrast and how you get there. Boy, this, this, uh, this video chat eats the batteries down. I just had to plug in again here. Think about contrast and density, and, and have, if you can, have some visual represent, representations around of what actually does print really well. Um, I am kind of beat that negative up at the top corner there, but am I going the right? There we go. There you go. Oh, yeah. That's uh, pretty hefty as far as density goes. So, so if you have some good examples, that's the best thing to work off of because if you have one good example, when you come to my workshops, I try to send you home with one good solid negative that you can always come back to and print for your baseline. And that's that's the object of these these workshops is to get people out of here with familiarize them. Three days you're not gonna a week, two weeks you're you're only gonna scratch the surface of this stuff. But in those three days I try to introduce them to the chemical changes and maybe we can go over that next time. The chemical changes and the formulations for making negatives the workflow methodology of making negatives and then the actual experience of doing those negatives and then taking a good negative home that they can always print out on the paper they make because you can make paper a lot easier than you can make negatives and they'll, they'll have that reference they can always reference back they can hold their own negative up and look at the density they don't have to have a densitometer they don't have to you know they don't have to do any of that it can all be visual and memory I, I like to write things down if you can but um, Barbara says it looks great. <coughs> Excuse me. When print is dry, do you flatten it in any manner before storage and mounting? Yes. Um, these don't curl very bad, but um, I like to uh, put them under a, a hot press and just flatten them out. Put them in a sleeve. I have cellophane sleeves. And then I have these storage containers. I don't know if they're even going to translate. These storage containers over here. And they're all full of negatives and prints and all kinds of junk. And, and that way I, um, that I can pull them out, mount them up, mount them, whatever. I have a bunch of small prints too. I just, yeah, flatten them out. If you're going to do albumin, these things definitely have to be flattened out. These, th there's, there's no way around that. These things are so crunchy and thin, super thin. This is the crowbar paper, super, super thin stuff. This is the collodion chloride paper, which you can see it, it curls a little bit, but it's there's nothing nothing extreme about it. It, it works well, um, or it stays pretty flat. This is still moist, so this is or it's still damp rather, so this is going to remain flexible for a little or not curled for a little while, but we'll just lay it there. I should be washing it. I'm currently creating some 810 negatives developed in pyro HD for salt printing. What are your thoughts about these negatives versus collodion glass plate negatives for the collodion chloride prints? Uh, you know, Tim, when I read your email or message earlier and I was I was thinking about that and that's an, a very interesting question. Um, you can get a really amazing results from digital negatives working in these old processes. Amazing, amazing stuff. Um, Am I going to say they're equal to a wet collodion negative? No, I'm not going to say that they're equal to a wet collodion negative. There's information in this plate that you're not going to. I don't think it's going to. You're going to have in a digital negative, especially 
you know, this is this was in the camera, so you're losing at least one generation right off the bat when you go to, to digital negatives. And I'm not dissing them at all. I, you know, if I could cram any more crap in this space, I'd probably I'd probably give it a go. But I'm I'm full up to here on processes. So in fact, I'm trying to go the opposite way. I'm trying to concentrate on just the one process or variant, a couple of variants within this one process. But um, I encourage you to do that, and, and more importantly, I encourage you after you do it to come in one of these live broadcasts, jump in the video, and and ha and start showing us some things. That's that's what I'd like you guys to do. I'd I'd like to be able to interact with you, get to know one another, see what you're doing, devote a few minutes to your place and what you're doing, and some of the problems you might um, be having, and um, and and try to resolve some of those or try to figure some of those things out. I'm. I'm never going to say I know everything about wet collodion. I don't. There's, uh, <laughs> there's no way you could. No human being does unless you're some kind of uh, deity. Um, this is, there's too many variables. There's too many things that can go wrong. And there's too, many, uh, too much chemistry and too much physics in it for, for everyone to uh, understand it completely on that level. But I do feel like I have a very good grasp um, chemically and, and every other way with it. So... Um, so that's that's the question. Great questions, Tim. I really appreciate them. That really, really good ones. Um, next next workshop on collodion negatives. Thank you. That wasn't a plant, but he will get his twenty dollars or ten quid. Sorry. Um, the next next workshop on collodion negatives will be March of 2015. March of 2015. I'm going to be doing a negative or a positive course in January. And then uh, the quarter system, so January, February, March, every three months, I'll do a negative. April, April, May, June, I'll do a positive. July, August, September, I'll do a negative. And October, November, December, I'll do a positive. So I'll do a course each quarter, and I'll alternate them, unless there's some huge demand. I'd love to have you over, Tim. You're not far. You, you would get a tremendous amount from one of the workshops. And if you don't believe me, ask you first, ask a myriad of other ones. I'll send you a whole list of people, and I don't pay them to brag about me either. I just try to give them what they come for and paid for. Um, okay, so Barbara says it looks great. When the print is dried, you flatten it. Okay, yeah, that's the right. I do flatten them, uh, sleeve them up. You don't need to though, Barbara. If you just wanna, if you just wanna let them dry, make sure they're completely dry. But if you just want, see how dark, how how that's darkening down there. Do you see any any tonal difference in that, guys? I do, but it may be subtle. Um, you can just let these dry down, Barbara, and sleeve them up, and they'll be fine. There's, there's not a problem at all. Um, this has been, and I want to do this. Thank you, so thank you, Terry. I, I appreciate you coming. Please join us next time. I'll be sure to send you an invite, um, Terry. Um, I think she's in Massachusetts. My eight by ten eggs are film eggs, typically F. P4 or FOMA 100 and Pyro, nice. Yes, if if they've got the density, Tim. Um, yeah, if they got the density, you're you're good to go. So Tim uh, Layton was just asking um, about the uh, digital and the film negatives. If you have a super dense film negative, or you want to make some super dense film negatives, um, and or digital negatives, I think the film negatives would actually even look better. But and contact print them on this paper. I see a huge movement coming for this stuff. I mean, huge, like huge as in positive, huge. Once, once all you guys get going out there, you're gonna you're gonna run your gamut on positive image making. It's gonna you're gonna you're gonna um, make positive. And some a lot of pe people vary. Some people make positives for a year and say, "Whoa, I need to come and learn negatives. I want you know, I'm done. I'm finished." You're not really finished. What it is 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 you need to go to that next level. It's an intuitive, natural. Uh, it's a natural evolution. Once you make positives, and, and and they become like you know, like positives for me. I shouldn't say this because this is going to post, but they're kind of boring in a way to make. I've made so many of them. I'm kind of, I'm not over the thrill, but but I want something a little more challenging with a little more variety. Negatives and printing will do that. I know I've ranted on about that, but but um, it's it's one of those things where 
once you once you get into this and you start learning about all the possibilities, whether it's the papers and toners or even the negatives. I mean, we're talking about film negatives and digital negatives. This printing out process is, I mean, it's it's addictive. There's a lot of variable, a lot of possibilities, and and you can do a lot with it. So it just opens up a lot of doors. So as you got all of you guys out there, guys and gals, men and women, working in wet collodion positives, you're going to at some point hit this positive wall, this wall that says, uh, yeah, just, I'm just not feeling it anymore. Um, I need to, you know, move on. I need to. It, it, you'll, you'll, you'll know that point. Contact somebody that can make negatives. Contact me, um, or contact someone close to you that makes negatives, and, and and start down that road. That'll that'll reignite your entire passion and love for this process. It will. It, it'll change everything. And yes, Barbara, thank you. Good advice on negative compare with. It is. It's it. It's one of the the one thing that I want people to leave here from these workshops with is not only the experience and the fun of of doing this and we we have social time and all that and we have a good time but it but but at the end of the day it's to go home with a little bit of a jump start on a very difficult um, process to to accommodate and assimilate to 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 bring the information in and then to apply it and and a lot of these things it's kind of like if you didn't know how to tie your shoelaces on your shoe and you were on the phone or, or you you knew how but you were you were the other person on the other end of the phone didn't know how and you were trying to explain to them how to tie their shoelaces this gets this complicated with these things so I try to send people home with the most simple basic thing I can and that's a good wet clothing negative so they can look at it they can print it out they can try to make their own and compare is this dense enough is it not because you don't know really where to quite stop in that read dev and next time we do this I'll take you in and we'll redevelop a negative and I'll show you this. You don't know quite where to stop with that redev until you've done it 500, five times or 500 times. It just depends. And what kind of paper are you going to print on? What kind of image do you want to make? It, 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 that developing out or redevelopment process is really critical. So it takes a lot of um, time to learn this. So I try to send people home with as much advanced knowledge without them even knowing they have the advanced knowledge knowledge and, and work on that at home and then pretty soon they're sliding that negative away from the workshop and working with their own and understanding it in a more practical and long-term way that's my only goal that's that's my only goal in these workshops so m having a having a reference is critical um, I, I wasn't so lucky in a lot of these ways so I had to stumble and bumble my way through a lot of this money and time and everything else okay Luciano ciao ciao and he, he's left from Italy. He had dinner as well, so wonderful. I think we'll wrap this up, guys. It's uh, 1.06 p.m. It's 1300, 13.06 in the beautiful city of Aurora, Colorado. Um, that's our final final little doodad there. And work on that. And then pretty soon, we're sliding our negative away from the workshop and working with their own. There's Tony. Oh. Um, am I getting feedback on that? Here, hold on. So, one one quick thing. If any of you have anything you want to say or ask or comment, I'd, I'd love to close it out with you guys on that end, and uh, we'll let it... Uh, two new chat messages. Oh, so I found the chat. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so next time, guys, don't uh, come, come loaded with some questions. Come loaded with some things for me to do. Um, or think about, or ponder, or challenge me. I want to challenge, man. Bring it. Bring in the big, gu big guns and lay them on me. I, I want it. I'm not afraid to, to put my stuff out there and, and see if you can, can challenge me and, and stump me. I'd love that. I'd love to say, God, I don't know. Let me find that out. Or you know, I, we need that stuff in our life. When you become too complacent, too comfortable, um, sometimes not so great things happen. So come next time, cha uh, challenge yourself, and. Um, or challenge me and challenge yourself and bring some questions. We'll try. I'll try to get. I'll try to fill up the chat or the the video um, line next time. I know how to do that now. Uh, we'll just get better at this. I'd like to plan one. I leave for China and we leave for China. Sorry, Jeannie and I leave for China in one week. We leave uh, yeah. one week tomorrow. We'll be flying out of Denver to Shanghai. Well, we fly. We're gonna stop in and see Tony. 
Um, <laughs> That's yeah. right. Well, we, fly, we fly Denver, San Francisco, San Francisco, Shanghai. Then we're there um, for for our time. Uh, I'm I, I didn't really tell you about it, but I'm going to do a couple of keynote spe uh, speeches, uh, lectures, if you will. Um, and then I'm going to. They've got a big placard for the clothing. <clears throat> Um, collective uh, to integrate that into China, and, um, wow. and we're gonna we're gonna open that up, and then we leave there, and we we fly out of Shanghai to Tokyo, and then we leave Tokyo, and we fly Tokyo to Denver straight through. So, wish us luck. Uh, the doctor did give us some Valium, so we may be taking that along the way, but we'll we'll see how it works out. It sounds very very long and. Uh, um, very difficult uh, journey, but we'll try it. Hey, Ufus, appreciate it, brother man. Ciao. And, and he said bye to Jeannie as well, too. I guess you guys can see all this stuff. I don't know. Thank you, Barbara. Please join us next time. I've always appreciated your support over the years. Thank you. Um, so that's our schedule, but I'd, I get back. Let me say I'd love to give you a report right after we get back. So if I'm, if I'm not dead from jet lag, let me look on the calendar here, and, and tentatively mark this on your di in your diaries or your calendar. Um, boy, look at my calendar; it does not look good. Um, we tentatively get back, or we get back, and I could tentatively plan for a another one of these on the 13th of December. I'll make a note of that. The 13th of December, we can hook up again. I'll give you a, the lowdown on China. I'll ser share some stuff from China. I'll bring some plates or some prints back. Um, I'll try to make some photographs while I'm over there. Well, I will make some photographs while I'm over there. But I'd like to, I'd like to um, engage you in the whole vibe of China. This is, this is virgin territory. We're reintroducing a process that was extremely, um, extremely um, popular. Thank you, Terry. You have a good, good day. Enjoy your day. All my best. Um, but um, it was very popular back in the day, and I know I'm going to meet a lot of conservators, a lot of Chinese. Um, uh, process historian types, uh, photograph, photographic historians are going to be a bunch of technical and scientific guys. And uh, hey, thanks, Phil, uh, Tim. I appreciate it, buddy. You guys have a great day, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Join me on the 13th here. We'll set it up, and we'll make it happen on the 13th. And I'll give you a full lowdown on the uh, whole China trip. Tony, I appreciate it, man. You have a good one. I'm glad uh, I'm glad you jumped in here. You go have a nice dinner, and uh, we'll catch everybody on the flip side. Wish us luck in China. Hope the plane doesn't crash, or I hope we don't end up in the Malaysia. We have to go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Best man in Sicily. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Jeannie can say, Ni hao ma. Ni hao ma. <laughs> How do you say goodbye in Chinese? Like Ciao. Take care, guys. I forgot. Um, I forgot that one. Yeah. We'll learn it. Take care, guys. Have a good one. Ciao. <laughs>